Yeah, no idea what happened there. No idea what happened there. Uh, yeah, it says you received guests. Okay, cool. Hey, so sorry, I have no idea what happened there. Uh, it started to be dumb. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this thing around, and once, like I said, hey, once we get a hundred folks up in here, we can get it on and started. Okay. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, so if you guys start joining in, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey, letting people come through, letting people come through. We, we just had 100 plus people up in here and apparently TikTok was like, nah, bro, not today. So um, real quick, real quick, as people start to trickle in, uh, my name is Kevin. I go by the boot nurse. Uh, you take your NCLEX tomorrow, then I don't need for you to be on here. You need to get off. And here's why. If you on here trying to get a learn on, what's up, Donna? If you're in here trying to get your learn on, hey, if you don't know it by now, you don't know it at all. Today should be a relaxation day before you go and take your exam. All right. So, ma'am, goodbye. And if you don't leave, I'm going to ban you. And so by that, I mean for you to come back and tell us when you pass. OK, so and I mean that out of nothing but love and sincere. So whoever Nini, ma'am, you got to go. You got to go. All right. Hey, so shout out to y'all. You already know the deal. I don't know what happened to TikTok. It kicked me off, but uh, waiting for y'all to trickle back through. OK, bye. Hey, hey, Nene, make sure you come back and you let us know. OK, Izzy, what says Kevin? I have to tell you that the forty eight dollars is super helpful, ma'am. I'm so glad that you find that super helpful. Hey, somebody came into my sent me a message today and asked me, am I a spam or am I real? And I was like, well, I don't know. Depends on who you're talking to, I guess. But yeah, good luck on your NCLEX, Nene, for real. I mean, that out of nothing but love and sincerity, I, I promise. So, hey, so hey, we got, what, 60-something people up in here? You guys already know the deal. I'll go through my spiel. Hey, you guys already know the deal. Participation, like, share, follow. Don't be selfish your whole life. Don't troll my chat. You troll my chat, I'm going to ban that ass. Literally, it says there, I'm going to ban that ass, okay? So don't be rude. Hey, also, don't rush me. You rush me, I'm going to ban you too. Um, Seven-day NCLEX course, $48. Hey, Izzy, let folks know if it's worth the $48, all right? Hey, and if you need one-on-one -on -one tutoring for NCLEX, that is also in there as well. And then we're going to do an Ask Me Anything after that, all right? So, hey, by the way, if you guys are new here, I'm a huge jokester, but one thing I don't play with is y'all playing with my time, all right? So you trying to rush me? Hey, does this look... You wouldn't be rushing nobody if you was sitting in somebody's class, all right? So don't be rude to me. I have a psych exam tomorrow. Steph, you got this. NCLEX on the 22nd. Is it Siobhan? Shout out to you. Here we go, y'all. Question number one. A client with a history of abusing uh, barbiturates abruptly stops taking the medication. The nurse should give priority to assessing the client for what? All right, so priority. What is the very first thing that I need to assess with this patient taking barbiturates who abruptly stopped taking them, right? Is it depression, suicidal ideation, tachycardia and diarrhea, muscle cramping, abdominal pain, or tachycardia and euphoric mood? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to everybody just jumping in here. By the way, I got these questions off nurseslabs.com. You guys can go over there and check those out for yourself. They are a free set of questions, free set of questions. All right. Also, let me put myself on a timer before somebody else tries to come in here and rush me. All right. Hey, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. All right. Camille, what's up? Let them know. Let them know. What's up, future nurses? Hey, that's how you guys should always think of yourself, right? Future nurses, because that's that's what you're going to be. And if you guys are a nurse already in here, you guys remember what it was like to be in this position. All right. Hey, 10 seconds. Uh, I'm from Iraq and I live in Tennessee. I'm also taking the NCLEX on the 17th. Don't cry. Hey, one of the girls I was in school with, uh, she was from Iraq, too. She was from uh, she was actually from Baghdad. So. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. Oops. Lied. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, there we go. And the answer is B, tachycardia and diarrhea. Barbiturates create a sedative effect. When the client stops taking barbiturates, uh, uh, he will experience tachycardia, diarrhea, and tachypnea. When given an, I when given an IV anesthetic, barbiturates uh, will produce a reduction in blood pressure and an increased heart rate. Respiratory depression and apnea may occur. Given the potential for severe adverse events, including death, a pharmacist should verify the dosing and perform a thorough medication reconciliation to ensure there are no drug interactions, in particular, additive CNS depression effects. All right. That's part of psychosocial integrity. You can also kind of throw that one in there for uh, pharmacology as well. Uh, psychosocial integrity is six to 12 percent on the NCLEX exam. It doesn't matter if it's the PN or if it's the RN. OK, and make sure you guys read your rationales, why you why it's correct and why it's incorrect. OK, that's where that is how you retain the information. All right, bruh, look, bruh, I'm letting you know. Here we go. Question number two. 
uh, during the assessment of a laboring client. All right. So, hey, paint the picture of, of a patient that's in labor. Right. The nurse notes that the fetal heart tones are uh, loudest in the upper right quadrant. The infant is most likely in which position? Is it right breech presentation? Right. Uh, was it? Um, oh, my God. The occiput, occiput and uh, anterior presentation. Is it the left sacral anterior presentation or the left uh, occiput transverse uh, presentation? Hey, not a late, not a labor and delivery guy. If I pronounce it wrong, sorry. Uh, do I look like a ten year old getting ready for a spelling bee? I don't. Or how to pronounce? That's just me. Hey, but welcome, welcome. Hey, if you guys are new here, I got these questions off nurseslabs.com. All right, make sure you guys like, make sure you guys share, make sure you guys follow. That is the trifecta that TikTok likes. I'm gonna give you guys mm, fifteen seconds. 15 seconds. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. If you're taking your NCLEX tomorrow, you better not be on here. I'm in med school and I don't know this. That's okay. I don't know. What does that mean? Hey, just because you're in med school, and even when you become a doctor, there's just things that you don't know. And says, you know me, ma'am. I, look, I said, if you're new here, I'm taking my, I'm taking it tomorrow. Crystal, like the champagne, ma'am, I'm going to need for you to get off of this live because if you don't know if you're not, if you don't know, and if you're not familiar by now, you don't know it at all. And all you're going to do is just create more anxiety that I already know that you have. So either I banned you or you leave, which one you want, you tell me, and then you come back and you tell us how you did on your exam. How about that? All right, y'all, here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is uh, a, it says, bruh, can we get the answer? A, can you like chill out? How about that? How about that negative soul with your negative comment? Um, Right breech presentation. If the fetal heart tones are heard in the uh, right upper abdomen, the infant is in a breech presentation. A breech position is not ideal for delivery. Though the majority of breech babies are health are born healthy, <clears throat> they may have a higher risk of birth defects or trauma during delivery. This position uh, can also be problematic because it increases the risk of forming a loop in the umbilical cord that could cause injury uh, to the baby if they are delivered vaginally. That's part of physiological adaptation, all right, which is the third largest section on the NCLEX. Uh, I took a whole eight hour shift to show the answer. It took a whole eight hour shift. Hey, we can make it a whole 12 hour shift if you want to, and then we could do it a whole 12, three on and two off for you to get the answer if you want that, all right? Here we go. Hey, you come with hey, you come with the trolling, you come with the sass, bro. I got something for you. Trust and believe me. Just because you're a just because you're a soon to be doctor doesn't mean you're exempt from getting that ass fucking chewed out. Here we go. Question number 3. The primary phys, uh, physiological alteration in the development of asthma is what? The bronchial inflammation uh, and dyspnea is it hy hypersecretion and abnormally uh viscerous muco uh, mucus uh infectious uh processes causing a mucosal edema or spasm of bronchial smooth muscles. All right, med student, let's see what you got. Let me give you all 20 seconds. Hypersensitivity, number one. Okay. Okay. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. All right. They're Brett today. There are a bunch of free questions over there. Also, I want to know if you're new here. I want to know who you are, where you're from where you're at in your nursing journey. If you're not a nurse, cool. Tell me what you do. It's D, 100%. Okay. Black Yada, gotcha. Appreciate the follow, Samantha and Sierra. Thank you. Sounds like D, actually probably D. Okay. All right, y'all, here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. Hi, I'm new. All right, Kenzie, where are you from? Let us know. And the answer is D, 100% spasm of bronchial smooth muscles. Asthma. Uh, is the presence of bronchial spasms. This spasm can be brought on by allergies or anxiety. Asthma is a condition of acute, fully reversible airway inflammation, often following exposure to an environmental trigger. The patho, uh, yeah, the pathological process begins with the inhalation of an irritant or an allergen, which then, due to bronchial hypersensitivity, leads to airway inflammation and an increase in mucus production. That is part of physiological adaptation. Third largest section on NCLEX at 14 to 17%. All right. Uh, Caitlin says I'm ICU nurse four years. Shout out to you. Kenzie says I'm from Indiana. First year of nursing school. Hey, all my first year nursing students or first semester. I know y'all are getting humbled. Y'all got humbled real quick. All right. Hey, but it's all good. It's all good. Here we go. Question number four. <clears throat> A client with mania. 
is unable to finish her dinner. To help her maintain sufficient uh, nourishment, the nurse should what? Serve high calorie foods uh, she can carry with her. Carry, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, encourage her appetite by sending out uh, for her favorite food. Is it uh, serve her small, uh, attractively arranged portions or allow her uh, in the unit kitchen for extra food whenever she pleases? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 300 plus of y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. Hey, make sure you guys are liking, you guys are sharing, you guys are following. All right. That is the super most important thing that TikTok likes and that, hey, we need to get this out to other people. All right. So don't be selfish your whole life. All right. Don't be coming over here, taking all this knowledge and not giving it back to other people. All right. That's the thing that makes people real greedy out here. And I don't like greedy folks. You know what I'm saying? Also, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you were at in your nursing journey. By the way, you come in here and rush me. I'm just going to go slower. So I just I suggest y'all 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 keep your people in check. All right. Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is a serve high calorie foods uh, she can carry with her. The client with mania is seldom sitting long enough to eat and burns many calories for energy. Finger foods or things a client can eat while moving around are the best options to improve uh, nutrition. Decreasing environmental stimulation may assist the client to relax. The nurse must provide a quiet environment uh, without noise, television, or or I'm sorry, and other distractions. That is basic care and comfort. Uh, six to twelve percent um, on the NCLEX. Also, remember when you, hey, part of the part of the trifecta of studying for your NCLEX questions, your rationales, content, and questions. All right, questions and answers. Here we go. On to the next one. Question number five. Uh, it says if I keep getting these right, I'll change. Hey, all right, keep getting them right, and then come change change your career. All right, here we go. Uh, question number five. To maintain Bryant's traction, <clears throat> the nurse must make certain that the child what. Hips are rested on the bed with legs suspended at uh, at a right angle of the bed. Hips are slightly elevated above the bed and the legs are suspended to uh, are at the right angle of the bed or to the bed. Hips are elevated above the level of the body on a pillow and the legs are suspended parallel to the bed or hips and legs are flat on the bed with the traction position at the foot of the bed. So I need a study buddy for NCLEX. Hey, they got them. Hey, you got plenty of folks up in here. You got plenty of folks. Hey, anybody want to be a study buddy? Brooke said this is hard. Yeah, it's kind of hard because you visually can't see what it looks like, especially if you don't know what a uh, what a Bryant's traction is. Need to study for NCLEX. Hey, this is what we're doing. We're studying. We're doing NCLEX questions. What time and days are these usually? Is it AMS? Uh, yes, I can't see it. You can't see what? Oh, you can't see actually like what a Bryant traction is. I'm tracking. Oh, we do these Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 530 Central Standard Time. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Is it Shaq or Shake? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Just failed last semester in nursing school. Lord of mercy. This is how you prepare. Facts. This is how you prepare. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here is our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. Hips are slightly elevated above the bed and the legs are suspended at the right or at a right angle to the bed. A Bryant's traction is used for uh, uh, fractured femurs and dislocated hips. The hips should be elevated 50 degrees off the bed. Bryant's traction is used for developmental dislocated hips. In Bryant's traction, uh, the child's body and the weights are are used as tension to keep uh, to keep the end of the femur in the hip socket. Fraction or traction uh, will help position the top of the femur into the hip socket correctly. What's up? Is it uh, Ladesia? What's up, ma'am? How are you? Hey, so that is part of basic care and comfort. Hey, if you guys, hey, go look up what a Bryant's traction is if you've never seen it before, right? Oh, and I do trauma and I do trauma for you. Kimberly, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, real quick commercial break. Hey, I appreciate everybody being here. Hey, make sure you guys participate. I'm kind of funny. Uh, I guess according to everybody else, I got some sass in here, but you know, whatever. Uh, this is easier than med school. Well, these are not, these are okay questions. All right. And, um, yeah, and you know what? I don't got nothing else to say about that. Um, make sure you guys like, share, and follow, okay? Don't be selfish your whole life. Hey, don't troll my chat. You troll my chat or come in here trying to rush me, I'm going to ban you. It literally says, I'm going to ban that ass. So don't be rude. 
Um, nurseslabs.com is where I got these questions from. And I will be honest, these questions are a little on the easier side, but it depends on where you are in your nursing journey on how you feel, how hard, or even how easy these questions are. Okay. Also seven day NCLEX course in its pre-launch $48, you guys, $48. And it's going away on black Friday. Trust and believe me, you come and ask me on Friday, can I get it for $48? The answer is going to be no. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out. Okay. Also, if you need NCLEX, if you need tutoring one-on-one, I do tutoring one-on-one. You can check that link out also on my bio and we're going to do an ask me anything after we do the NCLEX questions. All right. So there is that for you. Question number six, which action by the nurse indicates understanding of herpes zoster? The nurse covers the lesions with a sterile dressing, wears gloves uh, when providing care, administers a prescribed antibiotic or administers oxygen. Just been to shift with a, with a resident physician that didn't know how to do a 12 lead. Well, it doesn't, that, well, that doesn't surprise me. I've actually worked with residents who went in there during death and dying and told the patient's family that, oh, she's just blowing off all of the medication when in reality she was dying. And I was just like, wow, you kind of fucking suck. And you should probably rethink the stupidity that you just said. So, um, yeah, I've been there, been there. So, hey, newsflash to every doctor that's going to be a doctor. Hey, be humble. Right. And pay attention to what your nurses say to you. All right. I'm just keeping it real. B. Miami says B. All right, y'all. 15 seconds. What are we thinking? Also, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow, okay? Also, I got these questions off nurseslabs.com. They are a free set of questions. So if you guys want to go over there, you can partake as well. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at in your nursing journey. And if you're not a nurse... What do you do? And here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, wear gloves, <clears throat> you nasties. No, I'm just saying wear gloves when you provide care. Herpes zoster is shingles. Uh, clients with shingles should be placed in contact precautions. Wearing gloves during care will prevent transmission of the virus. Use universal precautions in caring for the client to prevent transmission of the disease to self and others. Uh, and other clients. Um, VZV can be transmitted to others and cause chickenpox in a person who has not previously had the disease. That is reduction of risk potential. That's nine to 12 percent on the NCLEX. Uh, you're a master, uh, master. You're a, a, a medical assistant who said that. Melissa, shout out to you. Preparing for your NCLEX RN. Shout out to y'all. All right. So here we go. Here we go. You're from Philly. All right. Shout out to Philly. I don't know nothing about Philly except for their steaks and cheese and meat meals, but whatever. Oh, and um, who else is from Philly? Kevin Hart. So, you know, shout out to Philly. Uh, I I need to pass my uh, NCLEX PN already passed the course. All right, cool. Hey, this is good. Hey, this is good for you. Right. Here we go. Question number seven. The client uh, has an order for a trough that has been drawn when receiving vancomycin. Right. The nurse is aware that the nurse should contact the lab uh, for them to collect the blood when 15 minutes after the infusion, 30 minutes before the infusion, one hour after the infusion or two hours after the infusion. I literally uh, I'm literally just a PCT. Chloe. Hey, so here's the thing I'm going to tell y'all. If you're a patient care tech, a mass, uh, 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 a medical assistant, uh, a CNA, an LPN, LVN, X-ray tech, PT, OT, whatever. Hey, I fucking love every single one of y'all. Right. And y'all are important. So you're not just the CNA. Let me tell you something right now. When I worked in the ICU, I would have loved to have a fucking PCT with me. I think I ended up having one my entire almost year that I was up there. And it was the greatest fucking thing I had ever experienced in my life. So you're not just a PCT. You're not just a fucking CNA. You're not just an LPN. Hell, you're not just a fucking nurse like you fucking matter, bro. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, our professor today recommended we use Hearst Review for NCLEX. Have you heard of it? I have. I have heard of Hearst. Uh, I think Hearst is OK. It didn't work for me. Um, the one thing I can tell you right now is it was very much an environmental issue for me because she has a thick ass country accent and she's from Mississippi, y'all. And uh, I, I, I couldn't focus because her accent was was really that much of a distraction. So um, and the answer is B, 30 minutes before the infusion. A trough level should be drawn 30 minutes before the third or fourth dose. Um, draw trough specimens immediately before the next dose. Do not draw specimen until a steady state is achieved. 
uh, draw peak specimens one to two hours after completion of intravenous dose. Main reason is because you want to see how much vancomycin is going into a patient, right? Because it has a, a, a narrow therapeutic window. So you don't want to give them too much because they can end up giving getting liver toxicity, right? And we don't want that. Hold up. I'm from Mississippi. All right, Ladesia, you got a, you got a thick ass country accent? I thought it was the Food Network lady giving the review. Oh, who is it? Uh, Paula, uh, Paula Dean? <laughs> hey, y'all wild out here. Hey, but seriously. Um, I have a lot of friends that have used HERS. I personally try to use HERS and it didn't really work for me, right? That's just me though. Uh, question number eight, the client using a diaphragm should be instructed to what? Refrain from um, keeping the diaphragm in longer than four hours, keep the diaphragm in a cool location, have the diaphragm resized if she gains five pounds or have the diaphragm resized if she has any surgeries. <laughs> All right. Shout out to all 200 plus y'all that are in here. We're doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys like, share, follow. All right. Don't be, don't be, uh, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. And apparently I'm sassy. I don't know what that means. I, I just don't. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm just not with the BS. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but I fucking love all y'all. I just want to let y'all know that right now. Also, I got these questions off nurselabs.com. You guys can go and check that out for yourself. They are a free set of questions. Didn't say that they were the best set of questions, but they are indeed free. I'm going to give y'all 10 seconds. Is it stuck on stitches? Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, keep the diaphragm in a cool location. The client using a diaphragm should keep the diaphragm in a cool location. It's not like I just repeated myself, right? The diaphragm is a birth control device that prevents sperm from entering the uterus. The diaphragm is a small reusable rubber or silicone cup with a flexible rim that, cover, that covers the cervix. Before sex, the diaphragm is inserted deep into the vagina so that part of the rim uh, fits snugly uh, behind the pubic bone. All right, that is part of health promotions and maintenance also uh, nine to twelve percent on the NCLEX. All right, hey. So if you visually don't understand what I'm talking about, it ain't nothing like good old Google University can't show you. Okay. Also, you it says do you uh, do people you yeah people actually do use diaphragms. You really don't see them too much, but hey, you know it's a form of a birth control. You know that people use, and you know it's you know it's your hey your body your choice baby. That's what I'm saying. Hey, and, and I do actually 100% uh, agree with that. Just shout out to all my ladies out there because 89% of nursing is women. So <laughs> I'm part of the team, y'all. I'm part of the team. All right, here we go. <laughs> Question number nine. The nurse is providing postpartum teaching for a mother planning to breastfeed her infant, which of the client's statements indicates the need for additional teaching, right? So what did she not understand, right? <laughs> um, I'm wearing a support bra. I'm uh, expressing milk from my breast. I'm drinking four glasses of fluid during a 24 hour period. Um, while I'm in the shower, I'll allow the water to run over my breast. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Welcome. If you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys like, smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Joanna, thank you for the follow. Uh, make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Don't be selfish your whole life. All right. Also, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. If you're not a nurse, what are you? You're a patient care tech. You a, a, a medical assistant. Are you just a med student? Are you just a doctor? Like, what are we doing? What y'all doing out here? All right, y'all. Here we go. Nursing student. Shout out to you. Shout out to y'all. Here we go. Hey, I'm going to do an ask me anything at the end of this, by the way. So McKenna. OK. Uh, is okay. That's already CNA from Jamaica. Okay, here we go. Here's our answer. Our answer is C. I'm drinking four glasses of fluid during a 24 hour period. Mothers who plan to breastfeed should drink plenty of liquids and four glasses of or four glasses um, are not enough in a 24 hour period. Women need extra support, encouragement, and reassurance while breastfeeding. Although we view breastfeeding as a natural process, it is still a skill that has to be learned. Initially, Breastfeeding can seem demanding as the baby may have a desire to feed or suck frequently. Babies, however, begin to establish their own pattern over time and the mother will begin to feel more comfortable and at ease. That's part of health promotion and maintenance. And remember, you guys, when you guys are reading, uh, you guys want to know your rationales. It's part of the question. Read the question. This solidifies the question that you just read before. OK, this is important. This is important. Right. That helps retain the information. All right. 
Also, hey, they got lactation specialists out there. Hey, nurses, did you guys know that you guys can be lactation specialists out there where you guys just talk about, you know, breastfeeding with breastfeeding moms? It's 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 glorious. I wish I had a job like that. Here we go. Question 10. Damage to cranial nerve or to, to the seventh cranial nerve results in what? Facial pain, absence of ability to smell, absence of eye movement or tinnitus or tinnitus, whatever. BSN 26 years NCP. Shout out to you, Beach Life. Uh, at the clinic, I am one of the MAs. Is it LS? Okay. I think it's A. Cool. All right. What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? And uh, Annie says A question mark. Annie, you got to give me an A with like a, at least one exclamation mark. All right. If you guys are new here, welcome. Samantha says I'm a new grad in NY. All right. Shout out to you, Samantha. Sam. You got A. All right, Annie. I see you. I see you. Caroline, don't yell at me, but I see you, though. I see you with the A. <laughs> All right, y'all. Mm, all right. I think we're good. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Here's our answer, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is A. So shout out to my two individuals that got the answer right, plus um, other millions of you that got it right. Um, the facial nerve is cranial nerve seven. If damage occurs, uh, the client will experience facial pain. The sensory portion or uh, uh, intermediate nerve has the following components. Taste to the anterior uh, two thirds of the tongue uh, is a secretory and uh, vasomotor fibers to the uh, lacrimal, lacrimal uh, gland, the mucous membrane of the nose and mouth and the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Uh, cutaneous sensory uh, impulses for the exterior auditory meatus and region uh, back of the ear, right? That is physiological adaptation, y'all. Third largest section on NCLEX, 14 to 17%. Uh, I've been in nursing school for three months and got and got right. Hey, shout out to you. Is it Tanji or Tanji? Tanji, like Tanjiro from uh, freaking uh, Demon Slayer. Shout out to you. Hey, shout out to all my anime heads out here. Anyways, hey, break time. Make sure you guys keep participating. Make sure you guys keep smashing that like button. You guys share and you guys, oh, Tanji, I got you. Make sure you guys like, make sure you guys share, make sure you guys follow. Don't be selfish. That is what helps get this information out to people, okay? Hey, also, don't troll my chat. I almost banned a couple people and I'm a little sad because I'm petty. Over 9,000, Vegeta style, okay? Uh, don't, hey, don't come in here and, tr and troll my chat because I'll ban you. I promise you. And I and I thoroughly enjoy it. Nurseslabs.com, which is where I got these questions from. So you guys can go over there and check that out for yourself. Seven-day NCLEX course is the course that I created. As a matter of fact, my last sections for the new generation NCLEX review is going up today. They are going up today. Um, $48 is going away Black Friday. Make sure you guys go check that out. Also, if you're looking for a one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can check that link out in my bio as well. All right. Uh, who says uh, as a high schooler can uh, what can I do to prepare? Be here. Honestly, be here. You're in a good spot. And also start looking at um, look at um, what is it? Start looking at prerequisites for nursing school. If nurses, if nursing is where you want to be. OK, here we go. Question number 11. Uh, a client is receiving peridium uh, for a urinary tract infection. The client should be taught that the medication may what cause diarrhea, change the color of your urine change mental status or change uh, uh, or causes change in taste. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Bella, what happened? Oh, my God, Bella. Lord of mercy, ma'am. I can't. Be uh, Lexi, appreciate the rose. Thank you. Easy question. Oh, OK, I hope you get it wrong. I hope just you get it wrong. Yeah, I said it. All right, y'all, 10 seconds. Everybody's screaming the answer at me, so I don't even know if I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds. User 66 says B, OK. I got it right, Kev. All right, fine. I just want to let y'all know, everybody who's answering B, if it's not B, I'm just going to say that you got the answer right, except for Bella, because she's going to be the only one that got it wrong. All right, y'all, here we go. Here's like, Here we go in three, two. All right, Bella, you win. You win this one. What's up, San Diego? I see you. All right, here we go. The answer is B, change <laughs> change the color of the urine clients taking peridium should be taught that the medication will turn their urine orange or red peridium can also cause a yellowish color to the skin and sclera if taken in large doses uh it relieves urinary tract pain burning irritation and discomfort as well as urgent and frequent urination caused by urinary tract infection surgery injury or examination procedures uh it's not an antibiotic uh and it does not cure the infection all right. A hey, pharmacological and parenteral therapy, second largest section on the NCLEX. Yes. Orange. Oompa Loompa style. 
you know uh so it says take out your your contacts when you oh yeah that's right take your contacts out absolutely go through all those things that you need to uh when it comes to taking those med those meds all right so shout out to all y'all here we go question number 12 which of the following tests should be performed before beginning a prescription of Accutane. Check the calcium level, perform a pregnancy test, monitor the apical pulse, or obtain a creatinine level. Hey, shout out to all 300 plus of y'all. Hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. All right. Shout out to y'all. It looks like everybody's screaming B, either B or A out here. Maya, thank you. Emily, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Beth, thank you for the follow. Bella, I don't even know what you said or did, so I ain't even acknowledging you right now. All right. Ten seconds, y'all. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. And if you're not a nurse, what you doing here? What you doing here? Coming to hang out with me. Lioness, thank you for all those roses. 17, 18, a lot of mercy. 19. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. 20, a lot of mercy. Here we go, y'all. Nurse consultant. Shout out to you, user 47. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B, perform a pregnancy test. Accutane <clears throat> is contraindicated for use by uh, pregnant clients because of the, uh, what is it, the, the, ter the terotogenic effect. There it is. All right. Uh, yeah. So can't give it. It says uh, can cause uh, congenital uh, uh, disabilities when pregnant women have taken. Right. So we definitely don't want to have a pregnant woman at all take uh, Accutane. All right. That's reduction of risk potential. OK. Reduction of risk potential. One of the lower ends on the NCLEX, but still very important because it pulls from all eight sections of the client needs. OK. Tanya says I'm a nurse practitioner. Shout out to you. Upcoming nurse. OK. So you're a nurse loading. That's what I'm talking about. So shout out to y'all. <clears throat> Here we go. Question number 13. A client with AIDS is uh, taking, uh, is it a uh, Zovirax or a Cyclovir? Which nursing intervention is most crucial during uh, the administration of a cyclovir? It says limit the client's uh, uh, activity, encourage a high uh, carbohydrate diet, utilize an incentive spirometer to improve respiratory functions, or uh, encourage fluids. What are we thinking? Currently in LVN. Okay, shout out to you in California. Shout out to y'all. Hey, welcome. If you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check those out for yourself. There are a free set of questions or free sets of questions, I should say. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Kevin, I introduce myself. Ma'am, I already know who you are. No, hey, no, don't nobody ask about Bella or who she is. Uh, can uh, anyone else in here social work? I got a friend that, that's a L, uh, LCSW that does social work. So I know a little bit about a little bit. All right. All right, y'all. Let's see what we got. Almost done with my first semester, 19 year old. Shout out to you. Please do legal ethics. Hey, whatever's on here is on here. If it's legal ethics and cool, but if it's not, then you have to be cool with that. So, all right. Patient care tech, nine months left in nursing school. Shout out to you, Luna. Shout out to you. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. In three, two, and first semester in nursing school. Hey, y'all getting humbled out there. I already know it. And the answer is D, encourage fluids. Patients taking a cyclovir should be encouraged to drink plenty of fluids because renal impairment can occur. Uh, an acute kidney injury is the most significant side effect of uh, the parenteral acyclovir administration. The incidence of AKI is comparable to other nephrotoxic medications such as aminoglycosides. Patients uh, with chronic kidney disease are at higher risk. Dose, adjust dose adjustments of acyclovir for ideal body weight and baseline renal function is imperative. That is pharmacological and parenteral therapy, second largest section on the exam you guys okay it doesn't matter if you're taking the rn or the lpn okay they're both labeled out pretty much the same all right all right y'all here we go make sure you guys are reading your rationales for why it is correct and also why it is incorrect you hey, you'll be very surprised on what question will pop up you know four or five questions down the line okay here we go question number 14 a client uh, is admitted for an mri the nurse should question the client regarding what? Pregnancy, titanium hip replacement, allergies to antibiotics, or inability to move his legs. Shoot, A or B. Okay. What are we thinking? Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. All right. Got them off nurseslabs.com. They're a free set of questions. Make sure you guys go over there and check them out for yourself. Make sure you guys smash that like button. You guys share and you guys follow. Hey, hey I need at least like 10,000 likes. I need at least 10,000 likes. I'm just saying. I need at least, at least for the moment. Okay. I wish NCLEX was this easy like this. Hey, 
this is hard. So, hey, it just depends. It, it depends on where you are. But NCLEX, if the NCLEX is this easy, ladies and gentlemen, do you think you're doing well on the exam? Because, hey, there are some hard questions that are in here, by the way. I'm just letting you know. No, he said nope, right? Because remember, the NCLEX is about analysis and application, critical thinking, clinical judgment. That's Those are what the NCLEX wants, okay? That's what they want. Now, if you start getting memorization or remembering or like that cranial nerve one, not so much, right? Not so much, not so much. Here we go. And the answer is A, pregnancy. Although there is no evidence, hold on. Okay. Although there is no, I had to make sure I was like, wait, what? Although there is no evidence to suggest MRI scans can pose a risk during pregnancy, it is a, a considered precaution to perform an MRI during pregnancy, particularly in the first three months. This is um, particularly the case during the first, tri uh, first trimester of pregnancy. There it is. The concern of pregnancy are the same as MRI in general, but the fetus may uh, be more sensitive to the effects, particularly uh, to heat and to the noise. Hey, so there's that. Shout out to all y'all. I appreciate everybody for the likes and follows. Man, I can't even follow you. I got so many folks up in here. But all right, y'all. Hey, reduction of risk potential. Okay, reduction of risk potential. Nine or six to nine to twelve percent on the NCLEX. Okay, I always hate these questions. Hey, these questions are pretty tough. Some of them are pretty tough, right? Here we go. Question number fifteen. The nurse is caring for a client receiving amphotericin B. Which of the following indicate that the client? has experienced toxicity of this drug. Is it uh, changes in vision, nausea, urinary frequency, or changes in skin color? What are we thinking? It says CC Paramedic, just here to learn. Appreciate you, Morgan, for wanting to get your learn on. I always love folks that come in here that are just like, yo, I just need a refresher. Bella, why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling? Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. Bella, I hear you. My goodness, Lord of mercy. Bella, you about to get banned. You already know how I feel about banning folks, okay? It's beyond, who said that? Uh, it's beyond the scope of nurse expertise to ask about devices. It's the radio, it's a radiologist's responsibility. Uh, you're right, it is a radiologist's responsibility. However, when you're taking care of a patient, the patient is your responsibility. So you have to make sure that you check these radiologists and everybody else when it comes to ancillary services and care to your patient. <clears throat> so even though ultimately the radiologist is responsible, but I'm still taking care of the patient. So it's still my responsibility as well. So trust and believe me, if a radiologist forgot shit rolls downhill and they will surely throw a nurse under the bus and be like, oh, the nurse didn't tell me. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to tell you. Here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is D, changes in skin color. You're really going to ban, ma'am, I'm not going to ban you. I'm just kidding. Golly. <laughs> Here we go. Clients taking amphotericin B should be monitored for liver, renal and bone marrow function because this drug is toxic to the kidneys and liver and causes bone marrow suppression. Jaundice is a sign of liver toxicity and is not specific to the use of amphotericin B. Um, due to the similarities of is it uh, the mammalian and fungal membranes, which both uh, cause uh, sterols, amphotericin B can exhibit cellular toxicity. Pharmacology. Pharmacological and parenteral therapies. It says, yeah, I read. Yeah, I read too fast. Hey, you already know the deal, <clears throat> right? RTFQ, right? Hey, what does RTFQ mean? Y'all let me know down in the chat. Just give me a guess. Just give me a guess on what RTFQ means because you'll hear me say it. You'll hear me say it all the time. Real quick, break time. Hey, don't y'all go nowhere. Sit that ass in that seat and listen to me right now. This is a break and we're doing NCLEX questions and I love y'all. Participate because I'm funny sometimes and I'm sassy, apparently. Uh, like, share and follow because that's what I need and that's what TikTok needs and that's what you want to do because out of the kindness of your heart, okay? Don't be selfish your whole life. Hey, don't troll my chat. If you troll my chat, I'm going to ban you just like I'm about to do Bella, okay? So don't be rude. Nurseslabs.com. There you go. Read the effing question. Um... Nurseslab.com is where I got these questions from. Free set of questions. You guys can go over there and check them out for yourself, okay? Seven-day NCLEX course. That's a course I created. The new generation NCLEX review is up. Uh, you guys can go over there and check that out for yourself. Only $48, and the price is going up. I'm letting you know right now. Black Friday or the day before Black Friday, that's it. That is it. Um, and you get it forever. You get it for a lifetime, so check it out. Uh, and if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching for NCLEX, you can check that link out in my bio as well. Here we go. Question number 16. Sage says, I'm a pre-nursing student right now. Hey, almost there. Almost there. <laughs> rabbit you got that <laughs> hey here we go 
A patient with a history of congestive heart failure arrives at the clinic complaining of dyspnea. Which of the following actions is the uh, is the first the nurse should perform? I don't even like the way that's worded. Ask the patient to lie down on the exam table. Perform a uh, blood. Oh, I'm sorry. Draw blood for chemistry panel and arterial blood gas in the patient for a chest X-ray or check the blood pressure. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Somebody says D, assess. Hey, remember AdPi. AdPi never goes away. Even when you work as a nurse, it never goes away. I'm just saying. Everybody's screaming D. Have some other folks say something different. D, my peeps. Let them know. Let them know what's up. Chest x-ray, pulmonary edema. Mm, how do we know that, though? Bella, what? I don't know what you said. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Amanda, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here's our answer. And three, two... And the answer is D, check the blood pressure, right? Because, hey, they present it to you. So we need to be able to get a set of vitals. We need hey, we need something. We got to assess our patient before we do anything, okay? A patient with congestive heart failure and dyspnea may have pulmonary edema. That's what <laughs> she said. Fuck, hey, I know, uh, which can cause severe hypertension. Therefore, taking the patient's blood pressure should be the first action. Monitor blood pressure and central venous pressure. Hypertension and elevated uh, CVP suggests Fluid volume excess and may reflect developing pulmonary congestion, all right, or heart failure. Um, that is reduction of risk potential. Remember, it is super important. It is super important, right? He says, why, why, I'm guessing you're, you said, why ain't it B? I'm guessing you mean, why isn't it B? But whatever. Queen Lex, I got you, boo. Uh, because we need to assess. We need to assess our patient. You always assess first. You always assess Right. Assess before you do, unless you delay doing prevents a patient to go into further harm, if that makes sense. If my patient's not breathing, I'm pretty sure I should just start doing chest compression. I, you know what I'm saying? So or if my patient has massive hemorrhage from the leg and you see that they can bleed from their femoral artery. I'm, I'm not going to be like, hey, let me check their blood pressure. Right. So there's that. Can you see the question? Camille? No, you cannot, because just like NCLEX, we don't go back. Got you. So. I don't mean that. I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just letting you know. All right. Here we go. Question 17. The clinic patient has recently been prescribed nitroglycerin for the treatment of angina. He calls the nurse complaining of frequent headaches. Which of the following responses to the patient is correct? So what did I say? That was right. Right. Uh, stop taking the nitroglycerin and see if the headaches improve. Go to the emergency department uh, to be checked because nitroglycerin, nitroglycerin can cause bleeding in the brain. Headaches are frequent side effects of nitroglycerin. Because uh, it causes vasodilation, the headaches are unlikely to be related to the nitroglycerin, so you should see your doctor for further investigation. Bella, okay. Bella, I see you. See. Susanna, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We are doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. They are a free set of questions, so make sure you guys go over there and check that out. Uh, can y'all not see? Because uh, let me see. Because if I zoom in too much, it's going to like not, it's not going to, um, like some people aren't going to be seen. Yeah, I'm in here. Uh, yeah, I'm here. In. Okay. Here I'm in. All right, cool. We can see. Cool. All right. It's too close. See, now, now somebody's saying it's too close. All right. I'm going to back it up some. Back it up. Back it up. All right. There we go. All right, y'all. Here we go. Thor, thank you for the follow. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two, one. Um, and the answer is C. Headaches are a frequent side effects of nitroglycerin because it causes vasodilation. Nitro nitroglycerin is a potent vasodilator and often uh, produces unwanted side effects such as headache, dizziness, and hypotension. Headaches can be severe, throbbing, and persistent and may occur immediately after use. Um, many of these adverse effects are secondary to the hypotensive effects of nitroglycerin. Patients may report symptoms of orthostatic hypotension, which manifests as dizziness, weakness, palpitation, and vertigo. Profound hypotension may occur in patients with preload dependent conditions. That is pharmacological and parenteral therapies. Bella, you all right. I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. You, you, you know what? Bella, you're either going to be really smart or really strong. But you won't be both. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, look, I'm sorry. That's love. There ain't nothing but love going on out here. I'm just saying. Hey, well, here we go. Question number 18. <laughs> A patient re uh, received surgery and chemotherapy for colon cancer. They're like, you like Bella? Nah, Bella just be out here messing with me. Um, Hold on. Uh, 
a, a client receiving surgery and chemotherapy for uh, colon surgery, completing three or therapy three months previously, and she is now in remission. At a follow-up appointment, the uh, she complains of fatigue following activity and difficulty with concentration at her weekly bridge game. Which of the following explanations would account for her symptoms? The symptoms may be a result of anemia because of the chemotherapy. Uh, the patient may be immunosuppressed, may be depressed, or may be dehydrated. Which one are we thinking? Let me give you all 20 seconds. Hey, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys keep smashing that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow your mom. Thank you for the follow. No, your mom. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. That's all right if you don't know. Hey, remember, I'd rather you guess and you got a 25% you got a 25% chance of getting it right if you truly don't know. But remember, apply what you know versus what you don't know. That way you can you can use the process of elimination. And then this is where hey, you know if you have a content deficit, you know you can go and check those out too. Ain't nothing a little Google can't fix. A because fatigue with activity. Okay. All right. All right. Somebody just asked me what the answer is. Well, I don't know. We're about to find out. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is A. The symptoms may be the result of anemia caused by chemotherapy. Three, um, three months after surgery and chemotherapy, the patient is likely to be feeling the after effects, which often include anemia because of bone marrow suppression. The side effects of cancer chemotherapy can be acute or prolonged and may need monitoring. It will require multidisciplinary monitoring as certain uh, patient populations may be at higher risk for complications. Interventions like exercise, optimizing sleep quality and behavioral therapies such as relaxation can help fatigue. That is reduction of risk potential. Right. Marcy says it makes sense. OK, OK. So hey, that's why it's important. This is why it's important that you read your rationales, y'all. It says, uh, what about if the patient coughs out blood? Okay, Cass, there, there's nowhere in that question that says anything about a, a, a patient coughing out blood. There's nowhere. So you start adding stuff into your questions, you're going to get the question wrong, all right? So you answer what they ask you. Because if you start throwing what ifs in there, mm -mm, then you, you're what if Lee probably going to get the question wrong, okay? That didn't even make sense, but you know what I mean. Question 19, a client, oh, I'm sorry, a clinic patient uh, has a hemoglobin concentration of 10.8. Right. And reports uh, sticking to a strict vegetarian diet, which of the following nutritional advice is appropriate. The, the diet is providing adequate sources of iron and requires no change. The patient should add meat to her diet. Uh, a vegetarian diet is not advised. The patient should use uh, iron cookware to prepare foods such as uh, a dark green leafy vegetables and legumes, uh, which are high in iron. Or drink a cup or a cup of coffee or tea should be added to every meal. C, okay, C, is it is it Rizzo the rat? Appreciate the follow. Appreciate the follow. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys smash that like button. You guys share and you guys follow. Hey, we're almost at question 20. I need 20,000 likes, y'all. Tasha, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. I need 20,000 likes, y'all. 20,000. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. It says, uh, uh, Pretty Black Reese. Ma'am, thank you for the follow. And the answer is C, 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 C. The patient should use iron cookware to prepare foods such as dark green leafy vegetables and legumes. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong, but uh, which are higher in iron, right? It says normal hemoglobin ranges from 11.5 to 15. Hey, so that number will vary, ladies and gentlemen. I don't need I don't need for you to come with the semantics. All right. Uh, this vegetarian uh, a patient is mildly anemic. Uh, when food is prepared in iron cookware, its iron content is increased. Anemia is defined as hemoglobin below uh, two standard deviations uh, of the mean for the age and gender of the patient. Iron is an essential component of the hemoglobin molecule. The most common cause of anemia worldwide is iron deficiency, which results in, uh, was it a microcyt my microcytic and hypochromic red cells uh, on the peripheral smear, right? So here's the thing. You may see the numbers that are out of range. Like some, some, some will say, you know, 10 to 16 or whatever. Now on NCLEX, they'll be like, hey, you have a hemoglobin of eight. OK, cool. We know that that is way out of range. Right. They're not going to be doing the onesies and twosies that are so close. OK, it says anemia can cause can be caused by B12 deficiency. Yep, sure can. It sure can. Appreciate everybody. 
uh, smashing that like button. Make sure you guys like, make sure you guys follow, make sure you guys share. Appreciate you. All right, here we go. Question 20. A hospitalized um, patient is receiving packed red blood cells for the treatment of severe anemia. Which of the following is the most accurate statement? Transfusion reaction is most likely immediate after the infusion is complete. Uh, packed red blood cells are best infused slowly through a 20 gauge IV. Uh, should be infused with 5% dextrose. A nurse should remain in the room during the first 15 minutes of infusion. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. I appreciate you guys being here. I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you're at in your nursing journey, except for Bella, because Bella, we already know about you. All right. I'm trying, I need to find somebody else to pick on because Bella be out here trying me. It says D, duh. Hey, you can't say duh because there's people that are in here that that are not even where you think that you where you are. You know what I mean? CRNA, D, okay. Okay, Karen. Oh, man. Karen. Your name is Karen? Ooh. Shout out to you, Karen. Shout out to you. I mean no disrespect to my CRNAs. I love my CRNAs. Dallas, Texas. Shout out to D-Town. All right, y'all. Here we go. <laughs> I see you, Karen. Man, Kevin is sassy. Look, okay. Hey, in real life, I don't... Hey, look, I don't play them games either, so don't... don't, don't I don't I'll be stunting on TikTok. All right, here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here it says, how hard was pharmacology? Hard. Pharmacology was one of the hardest classes that I, I took when I was in nursing school. All right, here we go. In three, two, and I'm pretty sure everyone else can agree with that as well. And the answer is D. Karen said it was D, y'all. So the answer is D. Uh, the nurse should remain in the room during the first 15 minutes of infusion. Transfusion reaction is most likely during the first 15 minutes of infusion, and a nurse should be present during this period. The nurse remains with the client, observing signs and symptoms, and monitoring vital signs as often as every five minutes. Meticulously verifying patient identification, beginning with the type and cross uh, sample collection and labeling the two, I'm sorry, labeling two double check uh, blood product and patient identification prior to transfusion. That is pharmacological and parenteral therapies. Blood transfusion is part of PHARM, y'all. It is part of pharmacology. All right. So be aware of that for everybody that's going to be taking it. It says flight nurse, uh, seeing if I remember everything. Uh, is it Deborah? All right, Debs. Hey, do you remember anything? Let us know. Uh, help farm is rough. LV and soon. Hey, pharmacology is a monster. Hey, here we go, y'all. Here we go. Hey, we at question 20. We're at a break time. Don't y'all go nowhere. Participate. All right, we're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Um, make sure you guys like, share, follow. Hey, I need 18. I mean, I need 20,000. We at 18 right now, baby. I need 20,000. We got to make it happen. All right. Hey, don't troll my chat. Um, I really do enjoy banning people. So don't be that person for me to ban you, okay? Because I will do it. Uh, nurseslabs.com is where I got these questions. So make sure you guys go check those out for yourself. Seven day NCLEX course, $48. That is going away. My new generation NCLEX review is up and the last two videos will be up tonight, ladies and gentlemen. So go get it. $48 It's yours for a lifetime. Also nurses, uh, that need or nursing students and graduates that need help with the NCLEX. If you want one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I got you on that. You can check it out in the link in my bio. And also we're going to do an ask me anything. All right. Uh, LPN and click soon do with school. What? Uh, I'm glad we are in. Yes. Integrated pharmacology. Hey, so the same farm that you learn as an LPN or LVN, it's the same pharmacology that you learn as an RN. The only difference is what you can and can't do. Right. I want to ask something. No, as a matter of fact, you ain't asking nothing at all. You're going to answer this question is what you're going to do. <laughs> oh my God. Question 21. Emergency department triage is an important nursing function. A nurse working the evening shift is presented with four patients at the same time. Which of the following patients should be assigned the highest priority? Ladies and gentlemen, that is a management of care question. Do you see it? That is a management of care question. All right. That's the kind of question that you want to see on NCLEX. All right. Is it a a patient with low grade fever, headache and um, is it my myalgia um, uh, myalgia uh, for the past 72 hours? A patient uh, who is unable to uh, bear weight on the left foot with swelling and bruising following a running accident, a patient with abdominal and chest pain following a large spicy meal or a child with one inch bleeding laceration in the chin, but otherwise well after falling um, while jumping on the bed. What are we thinking? <laughs> hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. All right, nurseslabs.com. That's a free, free bunch of questions that they got out there, okay? Free bunch of questions that they got out there. I'm gonna give y'all 15 seconds. Head injury to the child, okay? Somebody says C because of something about heart attack. I see spicy meal. All I say is, why is it spicy? 
Also, also, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. Right. Hey, sometimes you got to think of, you got to think outside the box when it comes to your ABCs, right? Airway, breathing and circulation. So am I having an airway problem here? Is there a breathing problem? Is there a circulation problem? Right. It sometimes that this is where it involves your critical thinking. It's not just on the surface. All right. Alaska. Shout out to Alaska. I know it's in the lower, you know, 48, you know, whatever we are. Or lower, wait, what else is higher than Alaska? It don't even matter. Here we go. Here's our answer. Y'all in three, two. And the answer is C, a patient with abdominal and chest pain following a large spicy meal. Emergency triage involves quick patient assessment to prioritize the need for further evaluation and care. Patients with trauma, chest pain, respiratory depression, or acute neurological changes are always classified number one priority. Though the patient with chest pain pre uh, presents or presented in the question, uh, recently ate a spicy meal and may be suffering from heartburn, he may also be having an acute myocardial infarction and requires urgent attention. This is where your critical thinking comes into play. And I said it, management of care, right? Management of care is the largest section on the NCLEX at 17 or no, 18 to 21% on the NCLEX, right? Chest pain and breathing is always first. Yeah, it all honestly, it just depends on how the question is asked, right? And what is presented in the answers. Because what if I had a patient that had an altered level of consciousness, right? But it had nothing to do with their circulation, right? What if it was expected and not expected? That is where your critical thinking has to go into play, okay? Here we go, question 22. A patient is admitted to the hospital with a calcium level of six. Which of the following symptoms would you not expect to see in this patient, right? So three of these answers are going to be correct and one is not, okay? So the one that is not correct is your correct answer, if that makes sense, okay? Is it numbness in the hands and feet, muscle cramps, hypoactive bowel sounds, or a positive, uh, is it a Shavasek sign? <laughs> what are we thinking? Uh, what does it say? Uh, New York RN uh, past uh, starting ICU step down in two weeks. Shout out to you, Destiny. It is your destiny to work um, to work in the ICU. <laughs> Jennifer says bowel sounds. Florida nursing student currently in pre-op. Hello, Kevin. What's up, Carolina? Got you scared, Destiny. Why do I got you scared? What you mean? If you scared, go to church. <laughs> Predictor on Friday, Chelsea. You got this. I read it wrong. Oh, Lord of mercy. Hey, RTFQ, RTFQ, y'all. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Destiny, I'm just playing with you. No, I'm serious. If you're scared, go to church. I'm serious about that. But don't be scared. What you scared of? Here we go. And the answer is C, hypoactive bowel sounds. A, neuro, a normal serum uh, uh, calcium is 8.5 to 10, right? Uh, the patient is uh, hypocalcemic. Uh, increased gastric motility resulting in hyperactive bowel sounds, not hypo. OK, abdominal cramping and diarrhea is an indication of hypocalcemia. Uh, hypocalcemia uh, is said to be um, present when the total serum calcium concentration is less than 8.8. .8. The disorder may be acquired or inherited, but its presentation can vary for uh, from asymptomatic to life threatening. Hypocalcemia is commonly seen in hospitalized patients and for the most part is mild in nature and only requires a supportive treatment. That is reduction of risk potential. What, what I do, what I do, Bella, why are you screaming at me? Appreciate all the, um, appreciate all the likes and the shares and the follows y'all. Y'all Gucci out here. I appreciate y'all. Calcium calms. Mm, look at you, Sydney. I, I ain't never heard that one before. You want to say something, Bella? You've been saying something the whole time. What you want to say now? Uh, it's me again, Sharon. What's up? How are you? Here we go. Question number 23. Where did you get this review of nurseslabs.com? Bella wants <laughs> Bella wants to ask a question. Bella, what you got? What you got? Uh, the question 23. The nurse cares for a patient with a uh, who has a nasal gastric tube attached to low suction uh, because of a suspected bowel obstruction. Which of the following ABGs or ABG results may be expected in this patient? What are we thinking? All right, Bella. It says so. Uh, we had the live NCLEX review that labs will be provided. Yes, labs are your lab. So your labs are provided on NCLEX as well as what the normal ranges are going to be. Right. However, you need to apply critical thinking to know what those labs present. So is it metabolic acidosis, alkalosis? If I have a potassium that's too high or too low, like, OK, I have hyperkalemia. What is that going to present? What is that going to look like? Um, on my EKG, am I going to have, you know, 
uh, narrow or prolonged QRS complex. Like, you know, those are the things. So, so even though I provide you what the ranges are, you need to know what is presented and what needs to be done after that or if it's normal. OK, somebody said metabolic alkalosis. Hey, remember, if it's not lung, if it's lung, think respiratory, right? ABGs are my kryptonite. Jo uh, is it Joanne? Uh, Joanne, you good out here. You good. Hey, practice, practice, practice. Here we go. And the answer, the correct answer is A, which is your pH is 7.52 and your CO2 is 54. A patient with nasal, I'm sorry, a patient on nasal gastric suction is at risk for uh, metabolic alkalosis as a result of a low uh, hydrochloric, a uh, hydrochloric acid in uh, gastric fluid. Uh, of the answers given, the only answer, A, um, uh, represents alkalosis. Normal range for pH is 7.35, 7.45, and the CO levels is 35 to 45. Uh, normal range for bicarb, 22 to 26. The lower the number, the more acidic the patient is, the higher the pH, the more base uh, is in the blood sample. That is reduction of risk potential, right? That takes nothing but practice, honestly, right? That's universal. Hey, those ranges are universal knowledge, but you need to know what is happening to your patient, period, right? And you need to know, hey, do I need to call the doctor or do I need to, you know, give them more oxygen if it's a respiratory thing, you know, bl have them blow into a bag, like whatever, you know what I mean? Like the, like you have to be able to know it. Uh, like Rome uh, sounds super helpful. Yeah, there you go. I personally didn't like Rome. It didn't really help me for some reason. I don't know why. I, I really can't. I really can't tell you. Here we go. Question 24. Uh, a patient is admitted to the hospital for routine elective surgery. Included uh, in the list of current medication is warfarin, also known as Coumadin, at a high dose. Um, concerned about the, about the possible side effects of the drug, particularly in a patient scheduled for surgery, the nurse anticipates which of the following actions. Draw a blood sample for, P, uh, for the PT and INR levels. Uh, administer vitamin K. Uh, draw a blood sample for a type and cross and request blood from the blood bank or cancel the surgery after the patient reports stopping the Coumadin previous, uh, one week previously. What are we thinking? Melissa, what am I waiting for? K says it's not B. Okay. Also, welcome. If you guys are new here, welcome, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. They are a free batch of questions, free batches of questions that they have out there. So make sure you guys go over there and check those out for yourself. Also, make sure you guys smash that like button. Hey, y'all, I need 30,000 likes. I need 30,000 likes, 30, three, zero. All right. D circulation. Okay. Is it, uh, is it Cassidy? Cassidy. I saw you out there. A is to see the therapeutic level. Okay. All right. 15 seconds. Y'all I got a bunch. Y'all are kind of all over the place. So what are we thinking? Make sure you guys share, make sure you guys follow. All right. Get this out to people that need it. User two, six, appreciate the follow. You need to have blood thinners before surgery. Okay. All right, y'all. Hey, man, we got almost 700 folks up in here. Y'all keep sharing. Vanessa, appreciate the follow. Thank you. All right, y'all. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. It can't be A and B. It has to be one. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. In three, two. And the answer is D. Draw a sample. Wait, hold on. No, it's not D. It's A. My bad. See, <laughs> it's A. It's A. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. It's A. So you need to uh, draw a sample for PT and the INR. The effect of Coumadin is to inhibit clotting. The next step is to check the PT and INR to determine the patient's uh, anticoagulation status and risk of bleeding. Patients receiving treatment with warfarin should have uh, close monitoring to ensure the safe and efficacy of the medication. Periodic blood testing is a recommendation to assess the patient's PT and INR. Next step. It says, okay, good. I went to the lab tech, so I picked A. <laughs> okay, Jasmine. All right. Shout out to you. Hey, that is reduction. Bella, what you mean you about to leave? What you mean? I'm a surge tech. That's cool. I'm a surge tech too. I've been a surge tech for like 13 years in the Navy. So shout out to all my surge tech. Shout out to everybody. All y'all out here. Hey, that's reduction of risk potential, y'all. Reduction of risk potential. Yes. I was actually a surge. Who is that? Is that the tatted mama? I was a surge tech instructor for three and a half years. And uh, I deployed as a surgical tech. So been a surgical tech for a while. I know a little something, something. So uh, here we go. Question 25. The following lab results are received for a patient. Which of the following are abnormal? Select all that apply. Uh, hemoglobin, cholesterol, uh, the protein. What are we thinking? Somebody said, uh, I heard Archer is better than you, world. Uh, that's subjective. Honestly, I'm going to tell I'm going to be completely real with y'all. All right. The reviews some are good, some are better than others. It all just, but in reality, it all really depends on you. Like 
if you don't have a good mindset and if you if you don't have a good mindset and if you're not prepared to take this exam, it doesn't matter what I could put the perfect review in front of you. And if you're just not ready for it, you're not ready for it. It says A&E, me guessing. That's cool. All right, so I'm going to give y'all 15 seconds. Shout out to all of y'all that are in here, all 600 plus of y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Hey, we got to get to 30,000 likes, y'all. We got to get to 30,000 likes. All right? Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Get it out to people that need it. Don't be selfish your whole life. All right? Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you're at in the nurse in your nursing journey. You're a goat. I'm a goat. First of all, sir. No, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here is our answer, y'all. Here is our answer. And three, two. And our answer is A and B. Okay? A and B. CBC <clears throat> includes measurement of hemoglobin levels in the blood. Normal uh, concentration of hemoglobin uh, are approximately 13.5 to 18 grams per deciliter in men and 11.5 to 16 grams per deciliter in women. You see how I said that some of these things, they fluctuate? Like even that last answer had something totally different, right, in regards to the hemoglobin levels, right? And total cholesterol levels of tw of 200 milligrams per deciliter or below are considered normal, all right? Dang, I was right the first time and I added E. So Amber, and this goes out for everybody that's in here, when it comes to a select all that apply question, if you don't know, don't pick it. I need for y'all to repeat it to yourself. If you don't know, don't pick it, right? Because you, you usually people that get the answer wrong with select all that apply is that you select one more than you should have selected, okay? So if you don't know, don't pick it, all right? I want you to I want you to hear my voice when you're at a select all that apply question, even when you're practicing. But real quick, break time. Make sure you guys participate. Make sure I keep smashing that like button because, you know, your boy loving that like button. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. OK, don't be greedy. Don't be selfish. All right. Hey, I haven't banned anybody yet. I'm really close. I really want to ban somebody. I'm itching, but I guess it's not. It's probably not going to happen today. But uh, make sure you're nice to others and you're nice to me. Um, Nurseslabs.com. This is where I got these questions from. OK, they're free. You guys can go over there and check them out for yourself. Also, seven day NCLEX course. It is going up in price to ninety seven dollars on Black Friday. I promise you. All right. So forty eight dollars. Y'all get a review and you get it forever. All right. So go over there and check that out. And I'm adding stuff into this course every two to four weeks. OK, I'm a one man army. So there's just so many things that I could do. All right. Hey. And also, if you're looking for one on one NCLEX coaching, you know, coaching and mentoring, you don't just get the coaching, you get the mentoring. Check out that link right there. That link is also provided in my bio. OK, and I'm going to do a ask me anything after this. OK, so here we go. Question number 26. Hey, we had 30,000 likes. Hey, shout out to y'all. Y'all keep doing y'all thing. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, a nurse is assigned to the pediatric uh, rheumatology clinic and is assessing a child who has been diagnosed with juvenile uh, idiopathic arthritis. Which of the following statements about the disease is most accurate? Hey, so most accurate. So that's telling me that there's other answers in here that are accurate, but there's one that stands above them all. OK, the child has a poor chance of recovery uh, without joint without joint deformity. Um, most children progress to rheum uh, adult rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are the first choice in treatment and physical activity should be minimized. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Hey, just like that, y'all, as soon as I go to a commercial break, I lose 200 people. They're just like, bro, I don't give a fuck about what you're selling. Give me the free shit. But I love y'all. Appreciate y'all rocking with me. All right. Hey, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. That's what I do. Also, um, it says maybe see Kawasaki's disease. Okay. All right. T says B. No, for real. Black Friday is for sales. A. I don't I don't I don't know what I don't know what that what is that referring to? What what's the context? I didn't see what you said. Hey, and shout out to all my LVNs, my patient care techs, my CNAs, my hey, hell, even my hey, shout out to all my doctors out there. I know I'll be giving y'all shit. I know I'll be giving y'all shit. But I, 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 I've worked with some fantastic physicians. I've worked with some fantastic nurse practitioners, all that good stuff. Uh, who is that man? Is it man pre? I hope I said that right. Here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. Wait, who said that? It said, I LOL that I don't give a fuck. Hey, I, hey, legit. No part of me cares. No part of me cares about. I just, I just, I, I don't, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, your NSAID drugs are your first choice in treatment. Um, the NSAID drugs are important first line treatment for juvenile idiopathic arthritis. 
right? Uh, NSAIDs require uh, three to four weeks for the therapeutic anti-inflammatory effects to be realized. NSAIDs are the mainstay of initial symptomatic treatment for all subtypes. The NSAIDs used in JIA has decreased over time with modern aggressive uh, treatment, including uh, methotrexate and biologics. That is a physiological adaptation. All right, third largest section on NCLEX, right? 14 to 17%. Bella, what's up? Didn't say anything about the risk of ulcers, even though we do know that taking NSAIDs do have a risk for taking ulcers, but it's not there. It's not there, right? Do you see it in the question? Don't add it in the question. If you add it in the question, you're going to get stuff like that wrong. So you only answer what is presented to you, okay? South Carolina, shout out to South Carolina. I got family that live out there. Some in Columbia, some in Chester, you know, I know. A tatted mom, look. Look, hey, we got Ken over there. You know what I'm saying? Question 27. A child is admitted to a hospital several days after stepping on a sharp object. Spartanburg, okay. Uh, on a sharp uh, object that penetrated her athletic shoe and entered the flesh of her foot. The physician is concerned about uh, osteomyelitis and has ordered parenteral antibiotics. Which of the following actions is done immediately before the antibiotics is started? The admission order is written. Uh, a blood culture is drawn, a complete blood count with differential is drawn, or the parents arrive. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? B, better safe than sorry. Mm hmm. There we go. Okay. What are we thinking? Shout out to everybody that's in here. Consent. All right, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I'm sorry. I know you've been getting that your whole life. You don't know me. And I just did that. Um, that's all out of love and no disrespect. I promise. Uh, 15 seconds. <laughs> What antibiotic will be, what antibiotic will be therapeutic, okay? Okay, before antibiotics, okay. Oops, hey, make sure you guys, RTFQ, right? Read the effing question. Read it. Or would that be RFEQ? Or RTE, whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm a professional what? I'm a professional patient, and I love doing that. <laughs> okay, Corey, all right. Definitely need consent first. All right, let's find out what the answer is. Let us find out what the answer is. Here we go, in three, two. And the answer is B, a blood draw. A blood culture is drawn. Antibiotics must be started after the blood culture is drawn as they may interfere with the identification uh, of the causative organism. Prolonged antibiotic therapy is the cornerstone of treatment to osteomyelitis. Results of culture and sensitivity should guide antibiotic treatment if possible. But in the absence of this data, it is uh, it is reasonable to start uh, empiric antibiotics antibiotics. I was out of breath, guys. Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX. Remember, it's very important that you read your, your, your rationales, why it's correct, and then why these answer choices are incorrect, right? That is where you retain, that is where you retain your information. Do you understand me? All right, cool. Claudia, hey, don't be laughing at me, okay? I'm sensitive. Here we go. Hey, question 28. Uh, a two-year-old child has sustained an injury to the leg and refuses to walk. The nurse in the emergency department documents swelling of the uh, lower uh, affected leg. Which of the following does the nurse suspect is the cause of the child's symptom? Possible fracture of the tibia, bruising of the gas, was it the the gastro the gastrocnemius muscle? Uh, possible fracture of the radius. Uh, no anatomic injury. The child wants his mom to carry him. What are we thinking? Hey, shout out to all 500 y'all that are in here listening to me run my mouth. We're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check those out for yourself. They're free batches of questions. Make sure you guys share, you guys like, and you guys follow this stream. Also, I put these questions up on YouTube. So if you know somebody that misses them or if you happen to miss one, just know that they're going to go up there. Okay. What it says, it says about to be $4.99 when I leave. Who said that? Who said that? Bye. Uh, it, it actually it's going to be four forty four when you leave or five forty four when you leave. So, yeah. So jokes on you. Huh? Um, yeah. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. Let me give you all 10 seconds. I wish I had TikTok when I was taking in clicks. Actually, same. I wish I did, too. I lie. I'm staying. Oh, man. Damn it. And I thought you was leaving. Lord of mercy. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Here we go. I do school now or in do school. Okay, gotcha. Oh, in DO school, like dental school. Okay, shout out to you. Uh, and the answer is A, possible fracture of the tibia. The child ref uh, the child's refusal to walk combined with swelling of the limb is suspicious for fracture. The severity of a fracture usually depends 
um, on the force that causes the break. If the bones, um, if the bone's breaking point has been exceeded only slightly, then the bone may crack uh, rather than break all the way through. Uh, if the force is extreme, such as in an automobile crash or gunshot, the bone may shatter. That is physiological adaptation. Third largest section on NCLEX. Read your rationales. Remember, you need content, Q&A, and rationales, right? That's what you need. All right. It says, how do we get better at critical thinking? Alex, that's practice, 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 practice. Right. And that and honestly, the critical thinking aspect will come when you start requiring a lot of content. OK, you got to acquire content because the content is where all of the information is at. All right. And you also acquire your your, uh, your critical thinking when you are in clinicals and stuff like that. OK, so here we go. Question number twenty nine. As I graduate in a few months, MA, continue to go. Hey, shout out to you, Courtney. Keep going to school. How much the course in practice? Uh, are you talking about my course or this course? Because this is free. Question 29. A toddler has recently been diagnosed with cere cerebral palsy or cerebral palsy, however you want to pronounce it. Which of the following information should the nurse provide to the parent? Note, more than one answer can be correct. Select all that apply. What are we thinking? I'm a psych RN. And I'm in NT now. Uh, what is uh, what is MT? Is that medical tech? Is that Montana? I don't know. Uh, I'll take my NCLEX in September. OK, A, B, A, B and D, A, B, D, uh, abdomen, B, C, D. With <laughs> is it Shania? Shania with the eyes, Montana. Oh, that's what I said. I said Montana. Anticoagulant. <laughs> I'm Hey, I want to know if I got anybody that's like overseas. Hey, I usually have people in here from Nepal. So shout out to all my folks from Nepal. Hey, is it pronounced? Uh, is it are they ne Nepalese or Nepalese? Like, how does that go? All right, y'all. Ten seconds. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. If you're new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. These are free here from Louis. Ugh. All right, here we go. <laughs> Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is A, B, and D. Ab, abdominins, right? Uh, delayed developmental milestones are characteristics of cerebral palsy. So regular screening and intervention is essential. Because of injury to upper motor neurons, children may have uh, ocular and speech difficulty. Uh, parent support groups help families to share and cope. That is part of health promotions and maintenance. Remember, what did I say about what did I say about uh, select all that apply questions? Remember, if you don't know, don't pick it. Right. Do not pick it if you don't know. OK, because nine times out of ten, when you select more than you should have selected. That's when you get the question wrong or nowadays select all that applies are um, are partial credit. Shout out to be more. Shout out to you. All right. All right, here we go, y'all. Question number 30. A child has recently been diagnosed with, is it a, a is it Dushnell's? Dushnell's muscular dystrophy. I always mess that up. So we'll say muscular dystrophy, right? The parents are receiving uh, genetic counseling uh, prior to planning another pregnancy. Which of the following statements include the most accurate information? Uh, uh, is an X-linked recessive disorder. So the daughter's uh, have a 50% chance of being carriers and sons, 50% chance of developing disease. Uh, is it the X-linked uh, recessive disorder? So both daughters and sons have a 50% chance of developing disease. Is it each child has a one in four chance of developing the dis uh, the disorder? Or is it sons only have a one in four chance of developing this the disorder? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 300 and plus of y'all. I'm, uh, I'm a lot even, I'm not even gonna pretend I know this, that's okay. Uh, I'm neutral. No answer. No, Bella. You got to hey, give me an answer. I would rather you guess than not answer at all because you have a hey, you have a 25 percent chance of getting it right rather than a zero percent chance if you don't answer at all. Right. Put it in perspective. I'm gonna give you all 15 seconds. All right. I'm gonna give you all 15 seconds. Hey, look, don't make that face. Just give me an answer. Wait 20 seconds. All right, fine. I'll wait 20 seconds. I'll give you all some time. Also, shout out for everybody for liking, sharing and following. Make sure you guys keep doing that. Y'all keep doing that. Hi, what says hi? Do you know who does this? But for radiology tie, unfortunately, I do not. Unfortunately, I do not. 
Here's my recommendation to you, though, Ty, is that if you're a radiology student, you should start doing it because the best way for you to learn is for you to teach others. I just put you on game. So I, my suggestion is that you do it. Here we go, y'all. Is it Duchenne's? Oh, I got you. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is a Duchenne's. All right, because I just found out how to say it. Duchenne's is an X linked recessive disorder. So daughters have a 50% chance of being carriers and sons a 50% chance of developing the disease. The recessive Duchenne's gene is located uh, on one of two X chromosomes of a female carrier. The DMD is a genetic disease due to the mutation of the, dis, the dystrophin gene uh, located on chromosome XP21. It is, inherit, uh, it is inherited as an X-linked recessive trait. However, approximately 30% of cases are due to new mutations. Carrier females show no evidence of muscular weakness. However, uh, symptomatic female carriers uh, have been described about 2.5% to 20% of female carriers may be affected. Uh, this can be explained uh, by the what is it the Lyon uh, hypothesis in which the normal X chromosome uh, becomes inactive and the X chromosome with the mutation is expressed. That is physiological adaptation, right? Third largest section on the NCLEX. That's a toughie, right? If you don't know, if you haven't seen that before, you're never going to know the answer, right? So sometimes guessing is the best. What time do you usually do these lives? Is it every day? I do them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, 5.30 Central Standard Time, uh, a.k.a. Texas time or just Texas because, you know, that's the only time that matters. But shout out to all the people that are in here. And hey, I got any folks in here from Texas? Shout out to my Texas folk. All right. But yeah, there's that question. But that, ladies and gentlemen, we, hey, that is it for the questions today. Hey, well, we're going to do an ask me anything. So I'm going to turn this thing around. All right. But I appreciate y'all participating. I love how y'all get, y'all got me to 30,000 likes. So I appreciate y'all. All right. We're going to keep doing it. Dallas in the house. Um, I didn't have to ban anybody. I'm a little sad about that because um, I'm petty. <laughs> Nurseslabs.com is where I got these from. I, my homeboy's from Longview, so shout out to you. Um, hey, like I said, seven-day NCLEX course, $48. Uh, it's going away on Black Friday. So I'm just letting you know that right now. It's going to go up in price. So, But hey, you still get it forever. So I'm just letting you know, hey, one-on-one -on -one tutoring, if that's what you guys want, cool, that's there. Uh, is it Magster? You're welcome. Also, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, you guys can check that out as well. And now we're going to do this AMA. So now I'm going to turn this camera around so you guys can look at my face because it's absolutely hideous. Hey, but what's up? How y'all doing? Welcome. We just do, hey, we do NCLEX questions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 530. Okay. Anonymous, you're welcome. Hi. Uh, what does it say? I, I was on your live after I failed the first time. About to go take it again on Wednesday. Shout out to you. Is it uh, Michaela? Shout out to you. New grab BSN. Take my NCLEX on the 20th. Hey, shout out to y'all. Uh, last minute tips. Uh, my last minute tips is to not do anything the day before. Um, and if you're taking it on Wednesday. Yeah, definitely. So tomorrow, don't do nothing. You need to relax. Uh, is it bom uh, bom Bombachi? I'm fucking that up completely. But thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you. This is great. Bree, you're very welcome. Hey, so... A little bit about me, y'all, or one thing that people don't know if you're new here is that I failed my NCLEX three times. Three. One, two, three. And let me tell you something. When I tell you, no part of me cares about what you think about that, because I've literally had people come up to me and say, like, oh, you failed three times. You're probably yeah, you're you, I guess you're going to be a terrible nurse. So they just assume that you're going to be a terrible nurse. I literally tell those people to go fuck themselves a lot because that test doesn't determine what type of nurse that you're going to be. Only you can do that. Right. And no one will ever know. No one will ever know that you failed that exam unless you openly tell them that you failed it. But then again, it don't even matter. C's get degrees if you say uh, if <laughs> is saying it for a reason. True. Right. But no one's going to care. Right. But you have people that are so high and mighty at wherever they are. They're like, oh, you failed. I've literally seen patient care techs that have taken that have taken their NCLEX when they were in nursing school and all the nurses on their floor knew that she took it. She failed it. And then all of a sudden they treated her like she was like she was dumb or like she wasn't worthy. And she came up to me and I told her, hey, you need to go. You need to switch departments because what is happening right here is toxic and they're not going to stop. And so she essentially did that. Uh, can I ask you a medical question? If Kate, uh, Caitlin, if it has anything to do with, you know, medical or medical advice, I will not answer it. And nobody in this chat will answer it. And it is foul. And I'm trying to tell you, some people are just like that. Uh, de uh, definitely been busting my ass studying every day. I hope it pays off. Don't tell me you hope, Michaela. How about we change our verbiage? We change our verbiage saying I will pass my NCLEX. You go in there with positivity. Let me tell you, because hope don't get you shit. Ask, ask the characters from Star Wars. I'm just letting you know. 
uh, did you take the new gen? No, I didn't take the new gen. However, I do coaching. I do NCLEX coaching and I have an NCLEX course. So I do NCLEX questions all the time. All the time. Yes, you, Michaela, you will pass the NCLEX on Wednesday. Don't come up in here telling me that you're scared. If you're scared, go to church. All right. Because the church will help you not be scared. But Kevin will be like, hey, you need to get it the fuck together. I'm being completely, I'm being completely honest. Uh, positive thoughts. And I'm going to tell you why. When I took my NCLEX, I took it four times, but I failed at three. Every time I was just like, fuck it. If I pass, I pass. Or I'm just like, well, I guess I'm not ready for it. Oh, I guess let me tell you the moment that I changed my entire thought process on the NCLEX, I passed it. I never want to take the NCLEX again. Kareem, is it Kareem? I'm saying that right? Kareem, I don't blame you. It's a tough Remember That exam is there to keep people out. All the th all the steps that happen in nursing school are used to keep people out. I promise you that. Right. You're you're a goat. Dave, my man, Davey, what's up, man? <clears throat> I took the new gen pass on the first time. It felt hard, but I passed. Hey, so remember, everybody that goes and takes the NCLEX is going to feel that 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 it, that they failed the exam. That's just that's a that's a feeling that nine times out of ten that people have. Right. CCRN is next. Hey, go get you that. Hey, I hear the CCRN has a lot of cardiac has a lot of cardiac. So I'm not sure. I've never taken it. What is the new gen? So the new gen generation, the new generation NCLEX. There's nothing different about it in regards to content, but it's how the questions are delivered to you. So they give you different type of questions. The biggest one are the case scenarios. So they give you, you know, your patient history. They give you, uh, you know, your vital signs with your labs, you know, and then they do it as a trend. Like if you were taking care of a patient on a floor. So, you know, you have different times, you'll have specimens, all that stuff. And then they're going to ask you, what should you do next? They're going to ask you, what are the things you anticipate? They have it based off of a bow tie, select all that apply, anticipate, not anticipate, stuff like that. But 60 to 70 percent of your of your test is still going to be multiple choice and it's still going to be select all that apply. Those are not going anywhere at all. They're not going anywhere. OK, so I, I like some people are just confused, like, oh, I'm scared about the new gen. I was like, ah, you really shouldn't be scared of it. You really shouldn't be scared of it. Amber, what you say? Hell no for Hey, but if you guys are still rocking with me, we got 200, 229 people in here. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. And if you're not a nurse, what are you doing here? So listen to me run my mouth. What's the best What's the best job outside of bedside? I would like to stay away from inside a hospital. Um, you can go work at a clinic. You can. There's so many other jobs like you can do medical devices. Uh, you can do aesthetics nursing. That's what a lot of nurses are wanting to do right now. Uh, you can be a school nurse. Um, there's so there's so many. You can go be a nurse on a cruise. You can go be a cruise ship nurse or whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, I failed med surge with 40 credits and got kicked out. Uh, it was the most depressing part of my life. Hey, so here's the thing. You failed med surge. So I'm sorry to hear that. So my question is, what are you going to do to fix it? What are you going to do to get back in? To, or if you're still in to, to 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 make those changes for yourself. Uh, any suggestion on uh, on a suggestion for having to retake the new gen NCLEX? You got to study for it, Ab. <laughs> Abs. Ha. Abby, you got to study for it. Uh, every time I introduce myself, you cut me off. Bella, I already know. We already know about you. Do you know how many breaks you get um, when you take the NCLEX? You can take as many breaks as you want. However, on the NCLEX, it is a running time. So your time never starts. Remember, you got five hours. If you don't know, you get five hours to take the NCLEX. If you take a break, your, your time does not stop. So if you're gone for half an hour because you got the BGs because you're nervous about this fucking test, 30 minutes is going to be gone. It's going to be gone. OK, I felt NCLEX three times now I'm working as a tech. OK, so you're you failed NCLEX CW. You failed NCLEX three times. Now you're working as a tech. So my next question is, when are you taking it a fourth time or are you just scared and you're just saying, fuck it, I'm just going to waste all the time for me going through nursing school when I should be out here working as a nurse? You tell me which one uh, in Oklahoma in my second semester. Shout out to Brazil. Uh, I'm from Michigan, uh, PN program, and we'll immediately get an RN. Shout out to you, Rosa from so SoCal, passed NCLEX and was offered a job. Shout out to you. Is it Zeke's mom? Okay, Zeke's mom. Shout out to Zeke's mom. Okay. Uh, L&D in Alaska, LPN. Okay. Uh, where I live, you can be in school with a uh, with a CMA. I'm guessing you mean as a, a medical assistant. Uh, Alabama. Okay. Uh, hell not to the new gen. I took it 12 years ago and I passed. Hey, shout out to you, Amber. Shout out to you. Hindsight's 2020. I worked in the ICU. I worked in the OR and I worked in PACU. And I say that the new gen is easier because in my eyes, I was just like, I already have all this experience. So it makes a lot more sense to me. All right. Let me see. Uh, what's up, Miss B? How are you? Uh, it says I'm from Gambia, West Africa. 
where do I, uh, where do I nursing program currently in program? So there's tons of nursing programs that are out there. You just gotta, you just gotta look, look specifically look in your area first of where you're going. Uh, I was saying hello to someone, not you, Kev. My bad, Isabella. Damn. Okay. How hard is it? One to ten. I don't know what that means. Oh, how hard is the NCLEX? Uh, it depends on you and how well you prepare for it. But it's definitely like an eight. It's definitely, definitely low as low as an eight for sure. Because if you're starting to get questions right, they're gonna start pulling out questions you've never heard before. You're gonna be like, what the fuck is that? Um, yes, you can be a nurse. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I was a search tech. I was a search tech. I was in the Navy. I was an instructor while I was in nursing school. So you can do that. What is the NCLEX? Uh, we don't have that in Australia. So the NCLEX is the licensing exam for um, for uh, nurses, for LPNs and RNs in the United States and Canada. So that's the licensing exam. That's for uh, as a canary. Uh, New Orleans. OK, uh, I'm going to attempt for the fourth time in January or February. Uh, I'm definitely not going to give up. That's what I'm talking about. That's all I want to hear. Okay, I'm telling you right now, we don't give up around here. I have coached people that have taken the NCLEX seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 times. Right. But once again, no job will care. Your patient won't give a fuck either. As long as you are doing the right things that you should be doing as a nurse. Uh, do you recommend any jobs outside of bedside nursing as a new grad? It, uh, is it Tati? It depends on what type of nurse that you want to be. Like if you want to be ICU or if you have the the if you want if you strive to be a, a nurse practitioner or a CRNA or a midwife or anything that is patient oriented. Hospitals where you got to go. Uh, I'm starting a nursing school in January. Any tips? Get your time management down now. Get it down now. Uh, I'm an RN and, uh, and almost finished my master's for psych nursing. Shout out to you, Canary. Shout out to you. Uh, how much is it for the NCLEX? What do you mean? How much is it? Like, how much is it to take the test? Uh, first, you have to register with your board of nursing. That's number one. And if you're already registered with your board of nursing, uh, then you have to register with Pearson View, and they're the ones that proctored the exam. So that's two hundred dollars. So it could be anywhere from two to four, or from three to four hundred dollars for you to take that exam. So it's a, I took an exam four times. So that's what three, six, nine, twelve. That's twelve hundred dollars right there. And that doesn't include any extra money that I spent on you know other reviews. You know uh, when I took it twenty three years ago, after three times you had to take a class. Uh, has it changed, Terry? It depends on what your state is. In Texas, you have four years to take it. And you can take it as much as you want. Some other some other states, you have unlimited amounts of time to take it. In Florida, you have three times to take it. After that, they will like won't allow you to take it or you have to take a remediation class or something along the lines of that. Uh, if you live in Alaska, there's a lot of scholarships uh, if you have a 3.0. Oh, oh you're talking about to get into school? Okay. Uh, I do teach. I actually am a trauma nurse instructor as well as uh, I was a surgical tech instructor for three and a half years. So um, I did that and I taught um, combat casualty care. I was a pre-hospital trauma instructor as well as uh, an advanced burn. I taught ACLS for a little bit as well. So I've been teaching in January. It'll be eight years that I've been teaching total across different programs. So and I also have my own NCLEX review. If you guys are new here, and you guys don't know that you guys can check out the NCLEX review. That link is in my bio. Also, um, I'm going to show you guys what the NCLEX review looks like. Right. Because I have a lot of people that are just like, I really want to buy your course, but I have no idea. Do you still do ACLS? I need mean, no, I, Bella, I don't do ACLS anymore. Um, uh, would you happen to know how NCLEX is graded? So the NCLEX is graded. So it, the easiest way that I can explain it, the NCLEX is graded from a zero to a 100 scale. Right. And you need to at least be half and above. So 50 percent. Right. And so think of and the, and the NCLEX is computer adaptive. OK, so based off of how you answer your question will depend on how the next question is. So if you get a if you get your question right, the NCLEX is going to give you a harder question. If you get it wrong, it's going to give you a slightly easier question. And if you keep getting them wrong, they're going to keep giving you easier questions. And it's based off of a off of a off of a standard line. If you are below it, you're failing. If you are above it, of course, you pass. Right. Uh, I think. Uh, you had to take remediation. South Carolina was three. Uh, it could have changed. I don't know about South Carolina uh, specifically, Terry. I do know for uh, for Texas, it is um, it is not that. All right, I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Uh, if I buy it, is it indefinite? Yes. It right now it is it is free. So I'm going to show you right now. All right. So this is what it. So this is what it looks like, right? So when you go to the the page or whatever, obviously you can see right here it says that it's forty eight dollars, right? I'm not lying to you. Can I act? Yes, you can access it forever. It is yours, and I update it, right? So I'm about I'm actually about to put one, two, three videos in there today, right? So obviously this is what you get, all kinds of stuff like that, 
right? So we talk about all kinds of stuff. And right here we have the curriculum, right? Some of these videos are not in here because I'm cont I'm continuously updating them, okay? But you will get the new, the new generation NCLEX review, all right? And I'm about to show y'all that right now too. So right here, all right? So when you get inside of the course, this is what it looks like. Hey, welcome to you know the seven day NCLEX course. And then over here towards your left are all the videos that are in here right now. You know, we talk about what is the NCLEX, you know, we talk about the passing standard, the plan, how to answer NCLEX style questions, critical thinking, so on and so forth. And then right there, it says the path to conquer NGN. No, it is not free. It's $48, right? And so right here, I have it part one. All the videos that I have in here, y'all, are less, are 30 minutes or less because who the hell wants to sit here for an hour and a half to listen to a video, right? So I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. You guys are going to hear my grossly disgusting voice, maybe. I don't know why it's not working. Oh, here we go. Autoimmune diseases. Right. Like many monoclonal so we talk about this. Right. Produce a powerful and we have one, response. two, so on and so forth. Uh, we go. Here's the beginning. What's going on, nurses? Can right. So we got this. And then we talk about like, you know, the changes that happen, all that. So this is new. This is new stuff that's going to be put up in here. Right. Uh, and then also towards the left. You know, we have the new generation NCLEX, but then we have, you know, like NCLEX prep. We talk about time management, your lab values that are important. Somebody asked about legal and legal rights and responsibilities. Talk about restraints, delegation and supervision. And by the way, this is both for RNs and LPNs. Right. And then my pharmacology section, y'all, has 18 videos. 18. Did that count that right? Yeah. 18. How to study farm, doses, calculations, antibiotics. Uh, diuretics. Uh, I like this. Wish there was more options back in my day. Way to go. I appreciate you, Terry. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's 40. I'm telling you right now, like, man, I wish Izzy was in here because Izzy was just like, I, I've looked at it, right? So fluid and electrolyte imbalances, uh, deep vein thrombosis. Some of these have case studies in them that are super helpful, right? Do you have anything for the T's? Cassandra, I don't. Um, it says, yo, uh, can you add exams to each level of the nursing curriculum? Hell yeah, I need this. So there are questions at the end of, of a lot of these, um, a lot of these lectures, right? I call them, you know, critical thinking questions, right? As well as, you know, in my review right here, there are, there's nothing but questions, right? Nothing but questions the whole time. So I'll show you right. I'll show you right here. I'll go back to number. No, it's still right here. So I'll show you. So we'll go over. Right. So question two. Also, when I'm talking, I even I even say like, hey, like, what is the topic of the question? Like, what is it asking you specifically? Right. So when you know the topic of the question and you can uh, you can reword it so you can better understand it. OK, so what do you guys you know here here? This is straight from the review, y'all straight from the review. So what do you think? What do you think this answer is? Right. What do you think it is? It says uh, the nurse is at home and responds to the neighbor's call for help. The nurse finds the neighbor's infant choking, but still responsive. Which of the following actions should the nurse take first? Right. So this is what even though we're talking about a foreign body aspiration because the baby is choking. I need to know what I need to do first. Right. So do I call 911? Uh, do I place the infant in my lap and I perform abdominal thrusts? Do I do back slaps followed by downward chest thrust or do I complete a finger sweep? Right. Yes. This is for a lifetime. You say three. OK, people are screaming three at me. Three, four, three, four. And unlike the review that I just did, I go through uh, like you won't see it like uh, like how I go to the next page and stuff like that, because that would have taken extremely long. But you'll hear me. You'll hear me read the rationale. You'll hear me talk to the rationale to you guys. And the great thing about it is that it's on demand. So you guys can go through and use them as much as you want. OK, it might be four. Well, let's see what the answer is. Let's see. Not one, not two, not four, but number three, right? Right, and then I go through all of them. I go through all of them. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you guys another one because I get asked this question a lot, right? So here's part two, right? And let us fast forward to this buddy right here. See that, right? That, to me, that looks like a case study. You see what I'm saying? And items, what, one of six, right? And so we go over here like so. Let me go. Right. And so this is the first question within the program is for right now. It's forty eight dollars. The camera is shaky because I'm holding it. Obviously, uh, I either got some Parkinson's going on or way too much fucking caffeine. 
I don't know which one, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so sorry that it's shaky, right? So right now, like I said, it's $48 and on Black Friday, the $48 is going away. You want to know why it's going away is because there's a lot of content that's in here, right? And it's, and in my opinion right now, at this point, it's worth more than $48. I'll keep it all the way a stack with y'all, right? So it's, but it's going to $97. And once you get it for $97, you still have the same perk. You have the same perk that you had before. You get it forever. How long have you been offering this and what's the passing rate? I've been offering this. I, I launched this program in, at the end of June and I haven't had anybody, I haven't had anybody fail right now. Some people are getting it while they're in nursing school, but I have gotten about 25 testimonies already and everybody's passed all 25, right? Uh, I need to pass each class. And also, you always see, you guys will start to see pauses that are in there because I go straight to it. When you guys, if you get the program, if you guys see this pause, that is your cue right now to pause it and for you to answer the question yourself. And then I go into why the answers are wrong, why they're right, so on and so forth. And then, of course, whoever said number four, right? What is the what name? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. So, And then, of course, we go back to the case study. Same scenario, right? But now you have a select all that apply. Remember with select all that apply, they are partial credit, right? So here's that. Then we go back this way, pause it, answer the questions. Those are all correct, right? And then, hey, here we go again. And now we go to, now with this one, this is what we call the drop down or the closed, right? Or the closed questions. These are essentially kind of like the fill in the blank. All right? So just be aware of that because those are the type of questions that you guys will see, all right? And then we'll fast forward. And then here's another one. And this is where I was talking about uh, oh, let me get it. like anticipated versus not anticipated. OK, so you see stuff like that and then you go on and let's see. Pause the video. We go through, talk about which ones are right or which ones are anticipated versus which ones aren't anticipated. OK. So on and so forth, like which one is indicated versus whatever is indicated. Right. This course is for a lifetime. Yes. It is for, it says it right there on the website. I'll even show you right now. So right here, whoop, scroll back right there. It says the perk right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. It says for a lifetime. Hold on one second. What is the website name? So go check the link in my bio and it'll take you directly there. It'll say the boot nurse. It'll say the boot nurse.com slash special because this is a special because it's going away. Right. But you get it for a lifetime. Hey, and look, the normal price is three forty seven. And eventually, I'm telling y'all right now, it's going to go to that. It's going to go to that. And notice that it expires on the 23rd. So on Black Friday, when people start asking me, hey, can I get it for 48? I want to be like, um, no. Right. So there's that. And this is what the course comes with. This is what you know. This is what we learn. This is what you learn. Right. And then we go down like so. We talk about the curriculum. Right. And these are things that are being added, right? So look, here's the, what I call the content vault. These are all of the subjects that are going to be added. Uh, do you have concept knowledge for certain subjects, uh, i.e. med surge? So I'm actually, I actually have a lecture for all of them, med surge one, two, and three, maternity, pharmacology, but those are still in production. Remember, I'm a one man, I'm a one man person and to record these, it takes a lot of time, but they are coming. Those are coming. And like I'm telling you right now, for $48, you're going to get everything. You're going to get this. You're going to get your uh, your NCLEX, your, uh, the, the seven-day NCLEX review, because that's what I'm recording right now. Uh, you're going to get, you know, whatever the rules are. You're going to get all the, like, you already see that. You already see these, right? And then, like I said, also, like, you're going to get all of this content, all of this content right here. All right. To include some other stuff that's going to go in there. Right. There's some PDFs that are in there that you can download. So that way you guys can go along with me, you know, stuff like that. But then, like I said, over here, sorry, if you guys can't see that, uh, Carmel says, I'm in. Look, hey, go over there and get it. That link is in my bio. Right. The link is in my bio and you'll see it. It'll say it says unable to buy the seven. Why? Why? Nadia, why do you say you're unable to buy it? Is there an issue with the website or what? You tell me. All right. So there's that. And there's that right there. OK. And that's what the and that's what uh, what it comes with. All right. So I'm going to turn this camera around. All right. Cool. So shout out to y'all. It says, so if we buy your course and fail, then what? I don't know what you want me to tell you. I don't know. So here's the thing. People will always turn around and try to blame somebody. If I fail my test 
if I take your course and I fail, then what? I don't know. I don't know, Don. What do you mean by that? I mean, you buy. So here's the thing. If you've taken a course before, like Hearst or Kaplan or anything like that, and you fail, then you fail. I just keep I'm keeping it all the way real with you because it is very. Let me tell you something. There are people that have already bought the course and I'm cool with that. It says, yeah, that lifetime is very. I'm trying to tell you. And it's like I said, if you're an LPN and all that good stuff, you know, it says then we get our money back. The fuck. Oh, okay, Susie. So there is. okay. so right now there is a seven day money back guarantee. Right. There's a seven day money back guarantee. So but here's the thing is. If you buy a product. And if it doesn't work for you, then maybe the product just isn't right for you, right? But there's plenty of testimonies from my coaching and from my course because my course is directly created from my coaching that shows that it works. Make it 30-day money back and I'll buy. No, I won't do that, Susie. Sorry. Unable to buy the uh, the seven seven days, isn't it? Okay. So, Susie, okay, Susie, it's it's on demand. It's an on-demand course. And by seven days, seven days. All right. So I want you to think about it like this. This is this is directly for Susie. Right. Why would you why would you get your money back? So I'm going to answer Susie's question. So the seven day NCLEX course, the seven days is meant for us to go over important NCLEX topics over a seven day period. Right. That's what it's for. Basically, have you ever been to a review like we'll say Kaplan, Hearst, whomever, and they do it over the weekend? Right. If they do it over the weekend, over three days, they're cramming all this stuff into your head. Right. And at that point, you're just like, damn, bro, like, I don't know if I get it all versus on an on demand course. You can pace yourself. It's seven days. So for management of care, take two to three hours out of your day and go through management of care with questions and answers. Right. So Hearst does have a. So here's the thing with Hearst. Have you read Hearst's return or refund policy? Have you read it? Okay, Susie, but have you read their money back guarantee? Because I've read it because I've had Hearst before. So here's the one thing about Hearst. If you want a money back guarantee, you have to go through all of their stuff. You have to go through all the questions. You have to go through all the content. If you fail, then then you get it back. But if you go and you try to take their material and then you want a refund, but if And if you print it out anything because they can see that you, number one, have to return it. And if you access any of their online stuff, they don't give it back to you. They have a three day money back guarantee if you don't like it. I'm just keeping I'm just keeping it all the way real. It says her her, and it says, uh, how do you study and prepare? So we talk about those things. We talk about those things. And I also offer one on one coaching as well. Uh, Says my nerd ass would do it all in one night. I love learning. Melissa, hey, some people are just built different. $48 $48 is a good price, to be honest. Hey, so $48 is a good price for you to get, which is what is eventually going to be over 150 to 200 videos of content inside of a program. You see what I'm saying? And here's the thing. I have no idea what you are doing as a as a as someone who has been who is an instructor, who is an educator who teaches students all the time. I have no idea what you're doing. So when people come up to me and tell me that they fail, I'm going to be like, what is it that you don't understand? I've actually gotten on phone calls with people who have failed the NCLEX, not using my program. And I'm just like, okay, like, so what, so what's the problem? There's always something. Everybody always wants to point the blame at somebody else, but you don't realize you got three fucking fingers pointing back at you. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, Stinger is I failed NCLEX and they say, uh, they give you your money back and tell you, uh, and tell you, uh, they don't. Yeah. And so like on my page, it says that. What's so great about your program? You know what's great about it is that you get you can get direct feedback from me. Number one, uh, it's forty eight dollars. So Susie, go around looking for a forty eight dollar course anywhere. Go around looking for a forty eight dollar course anywhere, and that's not a subscription. Is it possible to be a paramedic, firefighter, and a nurse or PA at the same time? So here's the thing: if you want to be, so first of all, if you're gonna go be a nurse, you could be a flight paramedic or a flight nurse. If you're going to go PA, go PA. Don't do so much. Like if you're when it comes to, to I mean, honestly, it all just depends on you. But in reality, you don't need to. You can still be a firefighter and work for the fire department as a flight nurse. You know, 
and says, oh, I just bought it. <laughs> Natalie, I appreciate you. $48 is good. Your time is worth more. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Emily says, do you know people who just gave up uh, after going through school? And I, yes, Emily, I have. I have known people. I knew a lady who I coached who graduated in 2004, took it one time and just didn't go back, didn't and didn't do it. And she came to me and she was like, hey, can you help me? Uh, I haven't taken the NCLEX since 2004. I was, my mind was fucking blown. I was just like, wait, where are you from? And are they going to allow for you to do that? You know what I mean? So what's the pass rate for your NCLEX? Right now it's 96%. Right now it's 96%. Why curse though? What do you mean? That's just my, that's, that's just my demeanor. That's what I do. But by the way, when you, if you guys purchase the course, then it's not in there. So uh, stick to one. It says the price alone is a great price. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, great price to get the deal. And that's what I'm saying. Another thing as well, it says you were an instructor in a search tech school. I was. I was. Price, please, uh, for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Chrissy, if you want to check out the one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can. the link is in my bio. Okay, so go over there and check that out. All right. Uh, Charlie says, Hey, uh, hey, I'm in, uh, hey, in there. Oh, okay. Oh, so you just, so you're in there into the program. Chrissy, you're welcome. Also, hey, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, do you go over test taking strategies as well? So I actually have videos that I am, that are in production that go over test taking strategies, go over prioritization and stuff like that. So I, I'm telling you, like you guys are going to get a whole like massive like curriculum in there. OK, like I said, I'm only one person. I can only record so much. You know, your boy got a family. He got all that other good jazz going on. But, you know, he's putting stuff out there. Uh, uh, those mock surgeries y'all used to do on us were the best. They were. I enjoyed mock surgeries. I enjoy those the best. It says, yes, I need test taking strategies for sure. So, yeah, I talk. I have one in here that's called Do You Critically Think? And I have another one in here called Answering NCLEX Style Questions. You know, but I have I have plans to I have a whole like notebook full of. Uh, of curriculum. You know, Stephanie said, uh, that's dope. Uh, you want, uh, you want to help people. I do. You know, I remember I failed my exam three times. Right. And, you know, reaching out to all these people saying like, Hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? It did. It just didn't work out well for me. Right. And so I eventually ended up getting a mentor who got, took me under their wing. Right. And that was another reason. That's another way how I ended up going into the coaching is because I never wanted anybody to feel how I felt. Right. So and so that's why I when I do coaching, like I'm very, like very particular about, hey, doing X, Y and Z. I just coached a young lady last week or I coached a, la a young lady over like the last 30 days. She took her test on Monday, passed, became an LPN or was an LPN on Wednesday. You know, that's because she put in the work and she followed, you know, the instructions. You know, there's a blueprint, you know, and then a lot of things about these programs, they don't teach, they don't teach or tell you that. And my program, my hope is for people to follow that, that way they can do better for themselves. Because what I've learned, I've put in there, such as, you know, there's going to be time management stuff in there, talking about accountability, you know, X, Y, and Z. There's going to be videos that are going to go up in there. Failed NCLEX four times, taking it again on Wednesday. Uh, feeling good about it this time. Is it uh, Mama Crohn's? Mama Cronex or Cron Mama Cron? I'm sorry, but I'm butchering your name. But hey, you're going to do well. All right. Hey, make sure tomorrow you don't do nothing and you just chill. OK, mom, Angel said, I'm interested. If you're interested in anything I got going on, you can check that link out in my bio. OK, uh, I failed twice and I feel so defeated. OK, so here's my and here's another thing that I'm going to tell people. So I failed three times, Don. Do you know whose fault it was? Mine. Everything is your fault. I'm keeping it all the way. It doesn't matter what review you have. Everything is your fault until you figure out what your issue is. You're not going to conquer it. And at this point, it's all about conquering that exam. So now my question is to you, what are you going to do to fix it? Worst feeling in the world when you fail. You're right. It was it was a, it was at that moment. It was the worst feeling in the world to fail. But I give myself perspective. And if that's the only if that's the worst thing that could happen to me that day is me fail the NCLEX, then I'm OK with that. I could be in Gaza or Israel somewhere. I could be in Afghanistan. Hey, I've been I've been on two deployments, y'all. So I have different perspective on where on how on on, on how things are. You know what I mean? It says, yeah, uh, I will be my, uh, that will be my testimony in 25. Fail twice, taking the NCLEX next week. Stephanie, you got this. Charlie says, will, uh, will we be able to purchase the, the, the test strategies information by itself? No. So everything that's in the pro, everything that's going up currently is just in the program. Everything that's going to go in the program when that comes up. But I, but I have been doing thing. I have been thinking about doing things a la carte, like just doing my pharmacology because I know people like that. So yes, LPN have my test. Uh, I have to take NCLEX. Yep. They sure do. 
LPN and RN take the same? No. So they take different NCLEXs, right? Because they have different scopes of practices. However, when you learn content, all the content is the same, but the scope of practice, as in what you like as an LPN, there are things that they can and cannot do. They can and cannot accept. Right. Versus how the RN is all about, you know, delegation, education, you know, uh, assessment, you know, first assessments and stuff like that. So you got to know who can do what. Right. It says, will the test strategy be available for uh, purchase separately? Charlie, no, not yet. Like it's going to be a while. I think I already answered your question, but I've been thinking about doing things a la carte. So, you know, just for say, hey, you know, hey, I just want I just want this. I'm like, okay, cool. I got you. A good thing about it is that you guys are not giving up every time you fail, make you strong. It does. It does make you stronger. It may. Let me tell you something right now. When somebody and this this is no shade against anybody that passed the NCLEX the first time, I promise you. But if somebody comes up to you who failed their NCLEX multiple times, had been a nurse for multiple years. And then they came up to you and they were just like, oh, you failed your NCLEX. That's cool. I failed it, too. Somebody who had been in that position telling you that it's okay is a lot better than somebody who had never been in that position. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It says, uh, Charlie says, okay, uh, thank you. I'm in my first semester. So, uh, concurring exams is what I need right now. Thank you. Oh, I I'm tracking. I got you. You know, I'll be, uh, I'll be here for all the way. Look, Hey, you're in your first semester, Charlie, by the time you graduate, it's all, everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be in there. Uh, if I purchase $48 now, uh, until how long would it be available for me? It's forever. So right now, the perk is you have it for a lifetime. Who gave me a crown? Farah, thank you for the crown. I appreciate you. So that is that. Go over there and is it is it Razan? I'm probably butchering your name, but go over there and look at um, look at the website. You have it for a lifetime. That is the the what I call the pre-launch bonus. It's like it's not on a subscription. It's not on anything like that. At least not now. But I can't tell you what what it's going to be, you know, six months from now. okay? and you're going to get the same. You're going to get updates, right? If you bought the course right now by 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, there'll be three videos put up there. Part uh, part seven and part eight of the uh, NGN review. And I believe I have a video called um, creating a study plan for yourself. Yep, that's what's in there. Uh, Last day, 23. What do you mean? Uh, my program required to be in all classes and prereqs, essay, reference letter, and personal test for entry. That's a lot. But remember, they put those things in place to keep people out. Will the content be uh, the same if sitting? Yeah, the content will be the same. So the biggest thing about content, content doesn't change a lot. Content across on, from the nurse, from the National Council, the people that write the exam, it doesn't change a lot. It probably changes like five, like five percent, like every like three to five years. But it's so it's so small, you would never really notice it. You know what I mean? Natalie has is asking a question. But yeah, so for next fall, it definitely will be there. And the thing about it, like this is my baby right here. So I am actively in this all the time. Oh, snap. Somebody gave me armor. I appreciate that. Appreciate the night helmet. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, so to buy your program for $48, the last days of 20. Oh, yes. So to buy it for $48, it ends on the 23rd. So yes, to answer your question, Steph, yes, that is what it does. But uh, to go back up to what uh, is it sheer? Is it sheer? Sheer? Whoa. Hopefully I'm not messing up your name. But um, but yeah. It'll um, you'll get all the updates and stuff. Uh, I am going to start nursing school soon, so I will prepare myself. So here's the thing. Here's one thing I'll tell you is that if you go in there, and you start looking at that information, which is totally fine. If you haven't started nursing school yet, at least your first semester, a lot of that is going to look foreign to you and it may not make sense. By all means, go in there and do your thing. But after when you get your when you get through fundamentals and my goal, I have I have a fundamentals lecture that I'm going to be recording and that is going to go up there. So hopefully it'll be up there for you. So fundamentals I'm doing, med surge one, two, three, maternity, psych, like I'm doing these accumulation of different videos. There's gonna, bro, listen y'all, there's gonna be a crap ton of videos that are gonna be in there over the next you know six months to a year, okay? Uh, appreciate you, I got a mustache. Oh, okay, it's gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, if I take the if I take the NCLEX in Michigan, am I allowed to practice in say Nevada? So if Michigan is part of what we call the Nurses Licensure Compact, then yes. I don't think Nevada is a part of that. Mercy Bond, hi Kevin. I don't know if you remember me, but I failed my AMP course starting the class back tomorrow. Mercy, 
your name Lamborghini Mercy. Mm, yeah, I remember you. Hey, well, shout out to you. It says starting the class back tomorrow. Hey, but that's you failed AMP. So cool. You're going back and you're taking it. Hey, that failure is back there. We don't we hey, we we don't turn around and we don't look at that. We look we look forward. That's where we look. So don't hey, no sad faces around here. All right. Uh, Razan, thanks. Uh, so you will be updating the course on demand. Yes, I I upgrade or I update the course often. Right. And by update, I mean, I put new content in there. Stop. Appreciate you. I got you. I got you, Mercy. So, yeah. So I update and I upload content often in there every two to four weeks. Hey, AMP is hard. So I feel you, Mercy. Hey, AMP is hard, but hey, AMP involves a lot of memorization. There's a like, uh, what's another good one? Uh, Khan Academy was mm, was great for AMP when I was in school. You a goat, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, is it is it uh, Pranav? Did I say it right? Pranav Patel. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Uh, it says your windshield is bigger than your rear view mirror. Oh, I see what you did there for a reason. Ah, I got you. I see what you did there. Uh, are there any study materials that you do for med search two for HESI? I, oh, OK, cool. I said it right. Um, I don't have anything specifically for HESI. I don't do HESI. I only specifically do NCLEX. Right. Um, but if you want to learn, I would definitely use that Saunders or that Elsevier book, because that's essentially like where they get their questions from. Uh, I think uh, it was so much material being covered in a short amount of time. And I didn't exact and I didn't exactly have the best teacher. Yeah, your teacher can make or break you, y'all. Your teacher can make or break you most definitely. Right. And I literally have people that come on to this to this live or they leave me comments on my Facebook ads and all that stuff. Yes, I have Facebook ads or else I can't reach the amount of audience that I want to reach. And they leave comments on there all the time saying, hey, I took your I took your review you know, with all the little content that I needed and I passed, you know, like it's there, you know, in reality, in the end, it is about you, your mindset, your thought process and how you need to go and tackle this exam. Uh, I have learned a lot from your lives. Is it is it Vika Vika store? I appreciate you. I appreciate you coming here. I'm going to screenshot that mostly is because I use it as a testimony. So thank you, Vika. I appreciate you. Who gave me a crown? Natalie, I appreciate you, Natalie. But uh, hey, I appreciate everybody being here. Um, make sure you guys share, make sure you guys follow if you guys are interested in the seven day NCLEX course, the seven day NCLEX course, all it is, is just spread out over a seven day period for you to acquire the knowledge and not feel so rushed. I remember when I took those reviews for NCLEX, they were three days. And when I talk about memory and sensory overload, it sucks so bad. So I was just like, you know what? Why not spread it out over seven days? You know what I mean? Like I look, I, remember I was a student, I was in y'all's position. Right. Not to in 2018, 19 and 20. I was in y'all's position, graduated school, took my NCLEX three times and failed it, passed it on the first time. Who in the world wants to go up to a school or anywhere and sit there for, you know, six to eight hours a day for three days, getting all this knowledge slammed into your brain when you can do it at your own pace for one to three hours and it's on demand so you can pause it so you don't miss anything. You know what I mean? Like that's the that is the reason why it's this. That's why it's the seven day NCLEX course. And it's called the course is because you get you're, you're getting a review. Uh, uh, I'm talking about a dense ass review on top of content that is pertinent, such as, you know, those areas like, oh, if you know that you're not doing so well in pharmacology. OK, cool. Go to the pharmacology lectures and get the content. Oh, you know that you need help with, you know, EKGs when they get up there. Go down to the cardiology section and look up EKG interpretation. You know, that that's why it's called the course is because it's an on demand thing for you to go in there and do your thing. That's why it's there. Right. Also, if you guys are new here, you guys can keep smashing that like button. You guys can keep sharing. Also, 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 I do um, NCLEX questions before. You know, I do NCLEX questions before I do this. Ask me anything. Usually about a first hour and hour and 15 minutes before I do anything before I do this. We'd go over questions. OK, it says, yeah, I had the ATI three day review and that was heavy. That's what I'm saying. So would you rather hear me out for all 50 something in y'all in here? Would you rather go somewhere where you're uncomfortable, sit there? Right. And, you know, make friends or do whatever you want. But you're there for a reason. You're there for a mission is to go acquire all that knowledge. You know what I mean? It says all the substance on NCLEX is on you world. Everything else is just doing too much. So it depends. User zero one one Helen Keller name or whatever. So well, it depends. 
I use UWorld and I didn't I didn't find that it was good for me. I think Archer is good because Archer provides Archer provides content. Archer also provides content, right? Which is what separates them from UWorld and also their price, which also separates them from UWorld. I like art when I coach students, like right now, I'm coaching seven students right now. And one of them's using Hearse, one's using Kaplan, one using UWorld, and the other four are using Archer. And it's funny because I've used them all. So I know exactly what they are. Yeah, Archer, yeah, yeah, Archer has like the videos. Yeah, they do. I signed up for Kaplan, but their content library is too massive and it's not broken up into sections. Yep. I you I've used Kaplan, so I know what their stuff looks like. But the thing about it is this is Kaplan's motto. This is Kaplan's thought process is that you can't say that they didn't give it to you because it's provided. They give you all the content that you could ever think of in the world. They give you um, they give you um, what else do they give? They give you an ebook, right? I personally have never used Simple Nursing except for his YouTube channel. I thought that his YouTube channel was great. Um, people like that, like like the Hearst Review, Simple Nursing, Mark Clement, Kaplan, uh, you know, NCLEX High Yield, all those Archer, all those people that are out there. Like I look up to those those people that make reviews. It's because you know they want to be able to help other nurses, right? But I can tell you one thing. I can almost guarantee you that none of them openly said that they failed the NCLEX except for me. Right. And I and I'm nowhere near where they are. Uh, Archer uh, helped me help me better than you world. I agree. I actually liked I, I like Archer, but then I like you world. That's me, though. Me and you world kind of have a love hate relationship. You world is harder than the NCLEX. Uh, if you do you world, NCLEX is a breeze. No, that's not true, because if NCLEX was a breeze, I wouldn't have failed it. So what you just said is a subjective statement sir or ma'am or whatever you identify as so Catherine says i pass the NCLEX with archer shout out to you kathy can i call you kathy don't matter i'm calling you kathy anyway uh study harder sir i did that's why i've been a nurse for three and a half years so no part of me cares about the fact of you know you're saying like i study you world i if put it this way if you world if everybody use you world and they pass they would have a hundred percent pass rate so once again the well, your statement is subjective I'm on my third attempt using Archer. Shout out to UV because you want to know why? Because you're going to get there. I want to do nursing, but I was told to do LVN first. Uh, but then others say do RN. So uh, is it Kari's Mink? So it all, honestly, it all just depends on you and what you want to do. If you want to go LPN, cool. If you want to take the steps to go that way, cool. But you don't have to do that. You can go RN if you want. You can go straight to RN if you want. But the choice is yours. Most people go the LPN route because it's a little bit cheaper on their pockets. You know, but... LPNs are still an intricate part of the nursing team. Don't ever don't ever get that confused. Failure leads to success. The one thing I'll tell you is that we are all unsuccessfully successful around here. All of us. All of us. Right. I don't give a fuck how many times you take an NCLEX. I don't care what review you use. You eventually if you don't do well at something, you will eventually do well. You know, you're being unsuccessful. Then you become successful. It's just kind of how that's kind of how it rolls, you know. Some people do LPN because they don't have the money. Exactly. Yeah. No, no. I meant do you use Archer on your third attempt? No, I used Kaplan on my fourth attempt. So I used UWorld like twice, two or three times, and it just didn't work. I used Mark Klimek. I used Saunders. I used Board Vitals. I used uh, Hearst Review. None of them. They just didn't work for me. But there was a lot of other there's a lot of other nuances that go into play with that. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's your mindset like? What's your environment like? Do you have a good support system? Right. Um a lot of things that happen to you in life encompasses how you're going to tackle this exam, right? LPNs have taught me so much. Hey, I learned wound care from LPNs. Are LPN nurses as well? It says it in the name. Is it Naya? I'm not going to say this in any rude or disrespectful way. LPN stands for Licensed Practical Nurse. Licensed. They have a license. They're not a CNA, which is a Certified Nursing Assistant. No shade against CN CNAs, but CNAs do don't have licenses. They have certifications. Licensed Practical Nurse is a nurse. A registered nurse is a nurse. An advanced practice registered nurse is a nurse. Okay. Uh, this says, what did you use on your last attempt for NCLEX? I used Kaplan. I went to a community college uh, for my RN. So maybe uh, that can also, that is also very much an option, Catherine, for sure. It says, Natalie says, it doesn't matter how many times you take the NCLEX. It just matters that you pass. Facts. Because no job is going to ask you, hey, how many times you fail? Oh, you're dumb. We don't want you here if you fail four times. No one gives a fuck about that. You want to know why? Because they're going to put that ass to work on the floor. That's exactly what they're going to do. Do you have an opinion for registered nurses or, or registered nurse RN videos? I'm doing my second NCLEX attempt. I think Nurse Sarah 
First of all, I think that she's a she's great, right? However, her accent is an environmental factor for me, so it kind of throws me off. Um, but it, I think that her stuff is phenomenal for nursing school because I use it during nursing school for real. Uh, I dislike I, I dislike board vitals too. It was actually terrible. I did UO to Mark Clinic, took it once. Uh, I did LPN, uh, and I want and I wanted something quick. Okay, uh, is it is it neek neek or neck neck? However you pronounce that. Uh, first of all, NCLEX or nursing school does not prepare you for real nursing world. It doesn't. Nursing school prepares you to graduate. If you want to be completely honest, they don't prepare you for the NCLEX. They prepare you to graduate. They prepare you to hit all the wickets you need to hit so you can walk across stage. My mom was an LPN. Shout out to your moms. I only used Archer and purely did the readiness exam and passing 85 questions. Well, shout out to you. That's not, that's not, that, unfortunately, that's not going to be the thing for everybody. Uh, do not talk shit about my, look, I ain't, Steph, I'm not talking about Nurse Sarah. I like her. I'm just saying it's just like, she just was for nursing school, she was cool, but for NCLEX, she was not. That's just for me, though. Um... It says, do you have to take the NCLEX for ASN and BSN? Yes. No, 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 no. So with uh, with your associates in science and nursing, it's the same NCLEX as if you take the BSN. So once you get your license, you don't got to take the uh, the NCLEX anymore. I hated ATI. Same. I mean, I never took ATI. We took HESI. Absolutely hate it. Absolutely couldn't stand it. Uh, literally, yes, my friend. And I said that too. People don't understand. Uh, they don't prep you for it. They don't. School doesn't prep you for that. Uh, not the board vitals. Uh, no, the board vitals are hard. And the board vitals is hard. Like it was hard. And I was just like, here's the thing. It's just like, there's so much context that if you don't have the content to back up what you're trying to study with questions, you're going to have a hard time. I have my exit HESI December 12th. Any advice? I would definitely. So the exit HESI is going to be a lot about management of care. A lot about management. It's going to be about your, it's going to be your heavy hitters, right? Management of care, leadership, transitions, all that good stuff. But definitely look at that Saunders book because if I remember the Hesse was the Elsevier's type stuff and they gave Saunders. So I would definitely look at that. Is that for Bebop? Bop, <laughs> bop, bop, bop. But shout out to you. You're taking ATI, Fiona. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm taking my exit ATI on the 20th and I'm so scared. Natalie, don't be scared of that. You already know what the deal. Hey, if you're scared, where are you going? If you're scared, where are you going? So but yeah, shout out to all 84 of y'all listening to me run my mouth. Hopefully, hopefully you guys are getting a good understanding about like what I'm putting out here, the product that I'm, hey, remember, I'm a, I'm a product of the product, y'all. Like my coaching, NCLEX, going through the, going through, you know, all the steps that I had to go through, you know, feeling like you were defeated, like you're a failure. Like I'm a product of that, right? And I created the product to give to other people because I don't want people to feel that way. Like legit, I legit want everybody to be out here and to succeed. So when you guys ask me questions, number one, it's kind of hard to tell the context based off of a message. That's number one. So I'm, I'm assuming a bunch of people, when they ask the question, they're like, oh, what about this? And I was just like, well, unfortunately, I am not I am not a big review like other people. However, I do give a, I do give, you know, um, you know, a refund, you know, seven days if you don't like it, you know, but I at the beginning when I launched my course, I had refunds all the time. Now I probably only get like maybe one or two because People value what is in there, especially this seven day NCLEX review. It's really it or the especially the, the new generation NCLEX review. And I haven't even dropped the review like for 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 the eight sections of the NCLEX uh, or for the client needs. I haven't even dropped that yet. And that's being recorded as we speak. Well, not as we speak, but, you know, when I'm not doing TikTok live, you know, Brittany says, what advice do you have for us uh, that's going into nursing? I start in 24 and I'm nervous as hell. The one thing I'll tell you, Brittany, is to honestly get your affairs in order when it comes to time management. Let people know that you're going to be in school. Let people know that you ain't going to be doing the things that you used to be doing because nursing school is about to be your life. It doesn't matter if you're LPN. It doesn't matter if you're going RN. Nursing school is going to be your life. You're about to figure out who is really behind you when you start school. OK, so time management, get you get used to it and be and be expected to be humble because that material is going to come fast. And know another thing I'll tell you is to get into a small group. OK, small group. Right. You three other people do 25 percent of the work, split it up and you do 25 percent of the work. You reap 100 percent of the benefits if the small group works correctly. Right. No talking about Taylor Swift and, 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 and Travis Kelsey. No talking about Bad Girls Club. No talking about none of that stupid shit that it doesn't matter. Right. Keeping the focus, keeping the focus. OK. And congratulations in the getting schools that, that like that's an accomplishment. People don't realize going through the prereqs and then taking the exam, the interest exam, writing letters, do whatever you have to do. It is a it is a it is a job. Most definitely. Right. 
uh, it's you, it's in you to know the substance. What are we talking about? Senior year. Yep. 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 Uh, you can do it. I'm in my last semester right now. Facts. That's so true. Nursing school is not, a, it is not a joke. It is not a game to play with. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, yep. Amen. Uh, you can, uh, you eat, breathe, sleep, nursing school facts. And that's what the, that's what the instructors are going to do too. They're going to be like, Hey, if you can't hack it, then you can leave. The whole point is for them to weed people out. I said, what type of nurse are you? ICU or med surge? I was ICU. So I did ICU for a little over a year. Uh, I worked in a burn ICU. I worked in a medical and a neuro ICU. And then I went to the PACU, worked there for a little bit. And the PACU is the recovery room. So post anesthesia um, uh, care unit as well. Uh, now, so I, I work in the, uh, the operating room so, uh, as a surgical nurse. Mm, it says uh, it was very hard to... It was very hard to get accepted in nursing school. Yep, it's competitive. And depending on the school, some schools are a thousand times more competitive than most, right? Uh, any tips for someone about to about going to med school with a bachelor's in business? All right, Ashley. <laughs> Ashley. So one thing I'll tell you is that if you want to go to med school, you need to do the prerequisites. You need to do the prerequisites that are required. You need to get as high as grades as possible. Right. Because med school, you think nursing school is competitive. Med school is just as competitive. Right. So you definitely need to do the prerequisite classes involved with that. Obviously, I've never been to med school, but I do know that that MCAT is not a joke. It is not a joke. And uh, med schools like to see other people like like to see people have other degrees besides, you know, something that's sciencey or medically or whatever. So but definitely the prereqs for sure. You always speak in facts. I love your lives. Sky, ma'am, I appreciate you being here. Oh, neuro is where it's at. Uh, I also scribe for neuro doctors. Hey, neuro is cool. Neuro is all right. I honestly I loved the burn ICU when I worked there. I loved it. Uh, I just did a, ro a rotation in the PACU uh, uh, in my pre-op, and I really like it. Hey, PACU is, I'm telling you right now, I as a nurse, I, I'm not going to say as a seasoned nurse, but as a nurse who had been working the floor for a while, PACU, holy grail, loved it. OR, great. Uh, what is it? Fiona says, any tips for pharmacology? Know your family name and suffixes, right? Example, cardiac meds. You know, all your cardiac meds, you're going to be looking at your, your ARBs, your ACE inhibitors, your beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, diuretics digoxin, nitroglycerin, stuff like that, right? Know the signs and symptoms. Know uh, what your patient is going to display. Know if they're what, uh, uh, um, you know, if they're for preload, afterload. Know your vitals such as blood pressure, heart rate, right? Know if, you know, what your potassium looks like, which is super important, right, when it comes to cardiac meds. So, and know, like the family name and the suffixes are, 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 are pertinent, like LOLs, beta blockers. Beta blockers are LOLs. Prills, right? Sartans. All those, right? Man, they gave me a red hot chili pepper. Girl, I appreciate you, Natalie. I appreciate you. Uh, are there any scholarship recommendations? I'm in Colorado. Marty, I'm not sure. But one thing I can tell you is that nurses or nurse.org, if you go up to their resources tab on their website, they literally have tons of um, resources for scholarships that are out there. I personally don't know any right, right this second off the top of my head. Uh, what are good short-term and long-term goals for a new grad? So a good short-term goal, if you're going to go work in a hospital, um, is for you to at least be there for a year for you to get over your imposter syndrome, right? Get the skills down, time management, time management and your skills, huge medication administration, huge. I don't want nobody in my chat coming and telling me that they gave somebody the wrong med. And then you end up like Radon Devant getting your license taken away and going to prison. We ain't trying to have all that. You know what I mean? Um, long term goal. You, honestly, your long term goal is you either have to make a decision. Are you going to stay bedside or are you going to leave bedside? And by that, are you going to stay bedside and want to be a charge nurse and want to do all the other shit? Or do you want to go the route and still do patient care, but you want to do MP? Or do you want to do, um, you know, family nurse practitioner, pediatric, psych? Do you want to do acute care? Do you want to go CRNA? Do you want to be a midwife? Uh, you know, what do you want to do, right? Do you want to go get your doctorate? Do you want to get out of patient care all the way and do something non-traditional nursing? You know what I mean? So that would be your long-term goal. First, first year to two years or first year for your short term, uh, three to five should be a long-term goal. Uh, can I get an ICU? Can I get into the ICU with an associate's degree? Hospital for uh, it depends on the hospital. I have a bachelor's degree. The reason why I have a bachelor's degree is number one, I didn't even know you could get an associate's degree uh, and be an RN. Didn't know that until I became a nurse and I needed a bachelor's degree so I could get uh, commissioned in the military as an officer. 
So that's the reason why I went uh, bachelor's. And in the military, they don't even tell you about it. They just say, hey, go straight for your bachelor's. Um, Natalie, it says, you like wounds, Kevin? Uh, is the burn unit probably, uh, you probably saw some that. I saw, I saw burns every day. I've seen, I saw a dude that got thrown into a furnace, people from a car fire. Uh, I've done, uh, I've been in the operating room when they're, when they've, uh, done, um, uh, surgical procedures, um, you know, cutting off all the skin. Like I've done all that stuff. Remember I used to be a surgical tech though. So I'm used to seeing all that stuff. Uh, I'm an LPN. I'm 25 years. I feel too old to go back to school. Hey, if you feel too old to go back to school, don't go back to school. But I'm telling you right now, you're not too old to go back to school. Your age has nothing to do with you going back to school, which is hard on your opinion. Pharmacology or med surge? Definitely pharmacology. Definitely farm. Farm was a monster and I hated it. Aesthetic nursing, that's <laughs> that's exactly where every nurse female that I know wants to go is, you know, pump somebody full of Botox and lip injections I obviously don't have that problem, right? So, but, you know, hey, if that's where you want to go, that's where you want to go. And I tell you, a lot of nurses that go there, they love it. Can you be a diabetic educator as an ADN or do you have to have a BSN? Jackie, that's a good question. Honestly, don't think it matters. I honestly don't think it matters. The scholarship college mama is on TikTok. She what? Oh, you're, oh so she talks about scholarships? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm in farm now. Yeah, farm is a monster, y'all. College Mama, uh, it says, uh, I, uh, oh, the scholarship College Mama can help you find scholarship. She's on TikTok. Oh, OK. Any tips on doing nursing education? You're talking about Kevin. Are you talking about like going to be like a nurse educator? Well, if you want to be a nurse educator, honestly, the biggest thing that you need to do that would help you be a preceptor when you get to work or when you're working. If they have an opening for a nurse educator position, definitely do it. Um, be at all of like, be very, very familiar, like at the end services. Um, you definitely got to know, you definitely have to have a certain level of education in order to teach other people. Like, I guess formally, but you know, but you don't, you know what I mean? So uh, I'm an LPN student and I'm having a hard time remembering medications. It is a hey, try flashcards. Flashcards may work for you. Susie says, how do you get, uh, how do you get internship when you're an LPN program? That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, if you're doing an LPN through, um, if you're doing an LPN program through a specific hospital, they may offer that. Yeah, flashcards for sure. Yes, and she has a lot of information and she's very helpful. She also does lives and scholarships. Shout out, I might just go follow her. Hey, uh, is it I C Y? What I C Y? You envy me? I A. I like. First of all, your name is awesome. That's number one. Number two, can you send her name to me in my uh? And can you DM it to me? Because I want to go. I want to go look at look at her stuff and give her a follow. Jackie says I have type one diabetes, and I think it would be awesome to help people going through the same shit I am. Exactly right. Why else? Why else do people become a nurse? Is because they saw how they were treated, and they want to be able to give that back, or they saw how a nurse treated their um their dying family member, or they saw how a nurse treated their child when they were in the hospital, and that right there is that's people's why. So your why is because you have the same disease process and you want to be able to educate people. Why do you think people who are a lot of people that are social workers or they do rehab are like recovering addicts is because they know what those people have been and they want to try to change their life around. So Jackie, I love that. I really love that. Uh, do you make the same amount as an associates RN or associates as a BSN wondering which to do? So uh, a BSN will make like a dollar more than an ADN. My opinion, if I could have gone back and done it all over again, I would have went and done an associate's degree program. I would have gotten my license, which is the most important thing. The license doesn't matter about the, the degree matters, but the degree doesn't matter with the job. It is the license that you have to have, the license that you can practice nursing. That's what's important. If I could have went back and done it all over again, I would have done an associate's degree program. And then I would have gotten my bachelor's online doing one or two classes at a time. Then I would have had two years experience by the time I got my bachelor's and I would have been Gucci out there. You know what I mean? So it all just depends on you. My opinion, what Kevin would have done, I would have done my associates first. Thank you. And yes, I will. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, how can I get into nurse advocacy as a job? So what do you mean? User one five. You got to give me you got to give me more uh, detail. What happened? What I say? It says, check out Nexus Nurse. Uh, she's the reason I passed the NCLEX. Nexus Nurse is pretty good, too. Their uh, YouTube channel is pretty good. I recommend their stuff, too. Uh, have you had BSN working? Wait, 
have to have a BSN to work in a magnet facility though. So you, okay, so if I have an associate's degree, I don't have, okay, so you can go and work in a magnet facility with an associate's degree. However, the caveat is they will tell you that you have to go and get your bachelor's degree. But most hospitals are doing that anyway, because most hospitals that are level twos or level threes are trying to get that magnet status, a.k.a. they're trying to get more federal funding so they can have more money flowing through their hospital. That's the only reason. But that statement is partially true, Sarah. Because not everybody can get into a bachelor's degree program. You know what I mean? So so this is like I found I found out about her and I love her content. Yeah, she's pretty good. Uh, Claudia says uh, it would be good if I could pay a bit more for a BSN, not just one dollar. It would be good. But let me tell you, these hospitals, that's how they treat you. You want to know where the real money is at? It is outside of the hospital. So working in a clinic, travel nursing, not working in a hospital. A hospital gains you the skills unless you plan on going up the clinical ladder and you want to be a manager or director and then they start paying you a little bit more money. But as a nurse that's working the floor, mm -mm, nope. I actually made a video. It's on my YouTube channel. It's called My First Nursing Paycheck. I actually like that video because I edited it a lot and I and I, and I pride myself on that. <laughs> but um, I talk about my first nursing paycheck. I lost like $1,100 a month when I left active duty in the military, becoming an RN or working as an RN with a bachelor's degree. And I'm telling you right now, when I got when I was just like, well, Lord have mercy, this is wild out here. If I would have known that, I probably would have stayed in the military active duty. Right. Uh, do you have to uh, do you know if having a DUI prior to nursing school will affect it? So when you do, if you have a DUI, they do a background check on you and they're going to come back with it. If you have a DUI, you may not even be able to get into nursing school. But then again, they may, depending on how long ago it was, so on and so forth, you can appeal it. Like I was a knucklehead back in the day. I got that nice little blue or yellow card that they send and I had to write. I had to send the the, the letter. I had, I had to get the police report. I had to get the uh, personal statement from people that I worked with. Like it was wild. It was wild. And I still got to become a nurse. Right. And that shit that happened when I was like 17, you know, LPN to AD is uh, to avian and recommended. Why not? Franklin, if you can do it, if that if that's how your pockets fit, would you work as a school nurse? I personally would not work as a school nurse. First of all, I don't even like my own kids. What makes you think I'm gonna like somebody else's? Hmm? Hmm? No, I'm just playing. But I, I couldn't work as a school nurse. School nurses, if you want to, to be completely honest, they don't get paid enough. Like you got to really love working as a school nurse. But most people work as school nurses because their kids are there. You know, their kids work there. So they try to get into the school nursing. Um, That's why I wanted to go into aesthetic nursing. Hey, so most times if you want to go into aesthetic nursing, they require you to have at least one year of nursing of nursing uh, experience. I can tell you there's one girl I worked with in the OR. And she flat out said, I hate this place. I can't wait to leave. And she was just like, look, I already got another job. They just told me I just need to hit a year. No lie. A year and a day. A year. She hit up. She was like, hey, here's my two weeks notice. Just like that. Just like that. She wasn't playing. No games. I actually uh, want to be a med surge nurse. That's uh, that or a nursing home. Uh, is it Texan ner uh, Ninja? Ma'am, go to med surge. Go to med surge. Uh, I am our school nurse. OK. Oh, you are your school nurse, but my kids are homeschooled. Ah, see, now that doesn't count. Uh, any opinions on correctional nursing? I can't really speak on correctional nursing. I know a few people that you would come into my lives that talk about correctional nursing, but I personally have no experience with that. But I do hear that they love working it. One's been working as a correctional nurse for like 17 years. Um, the pay is really, really good, um, but it all just depends on you and what you want. Um, user one five says like, is there a job position in nursing that I can advocate for patient cases? So you could do like case, you could do case management or case or case work. Um, and if you want to see those, all you got to do is just go to the hospital's website and see what jobs that they have available. But you got to remember, like, if, but if you're looking for a specific job title, you would, you would have to find it. I, I would think case management would be one of those, or they have, um, when you're working in the hospital, they have like the patient advocacy, uh, like committees, like the ethics committee, you know, that does those kind of things. Um, Franklin says, what's the least stressful nursing environment, clinical hospital or nursing home? Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Yo. All right. Um, so that also, now honestly, it depends on you. Clinics can have, can be stressful in their own right. But if you, in my opinion, I think it would be clinics. In my opinion, I think it would be clinics, right? So 
Jocelyn says, what's included in your seven day course? So Jocelyn, I just went through a whole bunch of stuff right now. You know, since I'm about to get off here in like five minutes, I'm going to show you again what's uh, what the course includes. OK, um, let me turn this around. So right here, sorry if my hands are shaky, by the way, because they're just shaky, but y'all will be OK. But so here's the course right here. This is what we were looking at. Right. That obviously is a um, is a, a new gen or next gen question. Uh, and then right here, right now, what comes inside the course is, you know, all these different uh, lectures, right? And you get them forever once you purchase, right? And then also, okay, bye. Wait, what happened? Sasha, what you talking about? Where are you going? Um, and then right here, we have the new generation NCLEX review. It's six parts. Actually, it's eight parts, and I'm uploading the next two tonight. So um, you get that. And then also, you have a bunch of content that's, getting, that's right here. Right here in itself for pharmacology is 18 videos, right? And I'm also going to be putting more type of pharmacology videos that are in here. So you're going to have tons and tons of content. So um, fluid and electrolyte imbalances, we talk about, you know, our the fluid and electrolytes imbalances right here. Uh, do you recommend we start in, uh, we start studying for NCLEX? I'm finishing my first semester. Texan, I would recommend start studying for NCLEX. Uh, I would recommend start looking at the material now, but start studying hard like in your last semester, like probably like a month or like two months before you graduate. All right. Um, and then, of course, down here, uh, we got our, our endocrine stuff, but there's more there's more stuff that's going in here. All right. There's more stuff that's going in here. All right. And by that, I mean more content that's going to be added. Over time. And the perk that you get right now for that is you um, you get it forever. You get it forever. All right. You get it for a lifetime. It's not the lifetime stuff is not going to be there forever. It's not going to be there forever. OK, so. I'm just saying for forty eight dollars, you get a you know, you get a whole bundled course with all this content on top of you're going to get all the stuff that's added and it's not subscription. It's not subscription yet. You know, oh, you already know he getting his eat on Sasha. You know, it says be strong. He says, hey, Kevin, I'm new here and also a fellow RN. What department do you work in? Uh, I've worked in the ICU. I worked in the PACU and now I do OR. Oh, you already know she in there doing her thing. So I'm actually about to get off here because I heard her screaming at somebody. So but uh, I appreciate everybody uh, hanging out with me. You guys got any other questions? You guys got any other questions? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? There was a cat outside my house. That's rude. Uh, is your course for they are both. It is for both RN and LPNs. Uh, breakfast for dinner, Sasha. Uh, would you ever want to be a clinical instructor? So I actually applied to be a clinical instructor and I never got a call back. So uh, I wouldn't have. Ne I, I love. So I was an instructor, a surgical tech instructor for three and a half years. Part of that three and a half years, I was a clinic. I was the clinical coordinator for my program. And um, like I loved it. I love going out into the hospital and teaching nursing students like that is my thing. I enjoyed it so much. But I applied to be somewhere and um, nothing. So it's, how old are your kids? Mine are seven, six, five, and three. And Lord have mercy. Popping them out. Um, <laughs> one's 19 months and the other one is 15. And by 15, I mean 15 years old. <laughs> I'm in the Bay Area. So many opportunities for uh, clickable instructors. And trust me, they need instructors everywhere. They need instructors everywhere. But, you know, clickable. Oh, you mean clinical instructors. Yeah. <laughs> but trust me, they need instructors everywhere. But, you know. People kind of, they try to gatekeep it. You know, you would be a great clinical. I appreciate that, Catherine. Thank you. But hey, if I don't get a call back, that's cool. Because I, this is how I supplement that is by doing TikTok lives is I can control this. I can do this any day I want. I could do it every day. I've been thinking about doing TikTok live every day, but just doing questions on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Because if I do questions too fast, then I might have to get them. I'm going to have to recycle them. And I want to start being able to give you guys newer stuff. And I'm working on actually doing more NCLEX, NCLEX like questions um, because nurses labs is cool because, you know, it keeps the brain moving. You know, what do you think about home care nursing? I think home care nursing is cool because you can actually make up your own schedule. So like if you want to go see four or five patients, you can. If you only want to see three, you can. You know, you can pick up and do overtime and all other stuff. My biggest thing is that I have a big, big thing about going into people's houses. And when I go into people's houses, I'm very weary of that because that's their own space, especially after what just happened, where they have been finding nurses unalived in patients' houses. You know what I'm saying? 
is, you know, you got to be real vigilant. You got to be real careful when you go into somebody's house like that. You know what I mean? So and plus, you know, I got a lot. Look, I was in the military. Like I've been deployed twice. So your boy got a lot. Your boy don't really trust folks. Like I'm like, yeah, what's up? What? What's that fork and knife for? To be like, oh, I'm eating. Oh, okay. Waiting, waiting for it to pop off. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, be strong. Uh, thank, I appreciate your support. Thank you. Hey, shout out to all. If I got any vets up in here, appreciate y'all. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate all the support. Hopefully, everybody had a good Veterans Day uh, festivities on a live. Meaning, it means exactly what you think it is. That's exactly what it means. If you're not alive, then you're unalive, which means that you're the other word. So I can't, there's certain words you can't say on TikTok or they, or they, they ban you or they, 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 um, they, uh, they warn you. So like if they warn you, you know, you can't do things. How often do you do these lives? I do them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at five 30 central standard time. I live in Texas. So, you know, that's Texas time. It's the only time that matters. All right. Uh, you hear about the one I did. I did hear about that one. Melissa nurses that used to be techs are the best. Yep. They are. But you want to because you already kind of got a familiar a familiarity of being like in the medical field, right? You really you are you're already very familiar with things. The thing that's tip, the thing that's different is the why. You know, like why do we do these specific things? Like you go into the the you go more into the intricacies of why we do the things that we do, right? And then of course when you go to an advanced practice nurse like CRNA or MP or anything like that, you go more into the why. You know, you go into the medical aspect, right? Even though you're a nurse. Not necessarily the nursing aspect, right? Uh, uh, what's it? They pitch it. They don't treat us like janitors. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I was a glor. I was, hey, look, I know what it's like to be a glorified janitor. Hey, imagine trying to be a glorified janitor when you're in Afghanistan in the middle of the mountains where there's nothing but dirt, and they're telling you to just sweep dirt. And I'm just like, why? Why, God? Why? Why me? So trust me, I've been there. Trust me, I know it. Fucking janitor, freaking all that stuff. Yeah. Trust and believe me. Look, some there's something some things you just can't ha- you just can't you just can't have can't help. But that was one of the best met all overall medical experiences of my life. Things that I did there that I would never do or you'll never do in the states ever. So, but um, yeah, I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, I'm about to get off because this food's about to get cold. But um, today is Monday, y'all, and we will do this same thing on. Wednesday, you doubt yourself, ma'am. Don't ever doubt yourself. I'll never doubt you. So you you should be the last person to ever doubt yourself. No one will ever doubt you around here. Okay. Uh, are you seven day in live? It's a, or it's at its own pace. It's on demand. Uh, I'm that, I'm that girl. Well, you are that girl, but it is, it is um, self-paced. It is self-paced. I've been thinking about doing a live one, um, but a live one over seven days could be very long and, in, and intricate, right? Which is not an issue. But I have to set aside the time to do that. And I still have a job that I have to do. So, hey, if I got enough people to buy it, I'm, I start, I'm going to start doing this stuff full time. Uh, no, I got you. I got you. Don't remind me it's only Monday. Hey, Melissa, it's Monday. Hey, Monday is almost over, though, you know. But anyways, hey, um, we'll do the same thing. Uh, same time Monday, we'll do our, our NCLEX questions and then we'll do an Ask Me Anything. Um, last thing, always take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself, Okay. Uh, Catherine, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. Hey, be kind to yourself. There's only one you. All right. And also give yourself perspective, right? Don't ever beat yourself up. You're not a failure, right? The perspective is you could be in Gaza right now. You could be in Israel right now, pulling out people from blown up buildings. You know what I'm saying? That's what you could be dealing with, but you're not, you know, you could have family members over there and, and, you know, a, and, and listen, seriously, like if you guys got any family members that are over there, like I really do feel for you. Like I understand, I understand what that scene looks like all too well. And it breaks my heart because, you know, it's just some things just, they, they, they just keep repeating themselves. Right. Um, but like I said, give yourself perspective. All right. Give yourself perspective about where you are in your life and where you could be. All right. Remember, it's just a test. You can go take that motherfucker as much as you want. Right. Remember you can, as a nurse, if you hate your job, you can always change it. You're not buckled down to that job. All right. I'm just being completely real. Right on, 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 and I say that on both sides of the ball because people are saying free Israel and shout out to you, but free Israel and you know, free Palestine. But people are dying regardless, all right. So, like I said, give yourself perspective. And my thought process on a lot of those things are very, very different. Like, I don't jump in and I don't talk about those, but when people die, they die. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter what side they're on, it doesn't matter who they are, it just they just die. And I don't, and I'm not a fan 
of people dying. Um, so, but yeah, be kind to yourself. They only got one you, all right? If you can't take care of you, you can't take care of nobody else, especially them damn kids, you feel me? So um, last shameless plug, um, check out, hey, check me out on YouTube, on, on Instagram, uh, and all that good jazz. You passed today, Taylor. Hey, Taylor, you, oh man, I was just about to get off. I was just about to get off. Hold on one second. Shout out to you, Taylor. Congratulations. I wish you would have been on here earlier because I, I would have had all 700 people giving you all this attention. But congratulations to you. Welcome to the shit show. Um, so happy that you passed. Um, come back on Wednesday. Come back on Wednesday and I want you to tell tell me again. That way I can get all these people to give you all this love. And then I want you to give them one tip about what you did to pass the NCLEX. OK, but um, damn, Taylor came all late. I says, sir, sorry. What is the salary as a nurse? Depends. Depends on what type of nurse that you are and where you work. Uh, you bad, Taylor. Congrats. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Um, also, last shameless plug. If you need one on one coaching like with NCLEX and mentoring, it is not just for NCLEX, but it's past NCLEX. You know, I do that mentoring and coaching. Check that link out. It's in my bio and it's labeled NCLEX one on one coaching. OK. Also, if you would like a review, the review that I've been showing all stream. That is the seven day NCLEX course. It is in, it is a self-paced on demand course. It is going for forty eight dollars. Yes. A four and an eight. OK, a four and an eight. Right. Um, and it's going away on Black Friday. I'm just letting you know that right now. So that link is also in my bio and it is titled the seven day NCLEX course. You get it for a lifetime. It's not going away. I'm not taking it away. All I'm doing is uploading more content in there every two to four weeks. OK, so. Those are the, those are the two options that you got. And then, of course, hey, I'm over here on TikTok live. It says, where were you when I was taking the NCLEX? Look, I'm trying to look. I don't know. I'm, I was probably I was probably like not doing this or I was probably working or I was probably in school, too. I don't know. Um. So but shout out to y'all. I appreciate everybody being here. Um. Come through on Wednesday, 530. And uh, until then, tell everybody about that review. Tell everybody about the coaching. And until then, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.